100 yards or close to that by halftime. Jackson at 100 yards by halftime. Yep. Anderson, will he avoid the turnovers? Which team's going to win this bad blood bowl that's developed in Las Vegas? Both teams looking for respect. And Mexico looking for a landmark win over the Pac-10. And Oregon State trying to knock off the Lobos and close in the strong note. Enjoy the game. We'll be back here at halftime. One's presentation of ESPN Bowl Week. Welcome to Christmas Eve in Las Vegas. Tonight, Steven Jackson leads the Oregon State Beavers. He's a combination of power and speed rolled into one big package, and he's home for the holidays in Vegas. But Dontrell Moore might just steal the show for New Mexico. This elusive runner is the best back you might not have seen yet. And he's ready to spring a Christmas surprise. It's the night before Christmas. Santa's not here yet, but there's plenty of stirring in Las Vegas. Merry Christmas, everyone, from Las Vegas and the 12th annual Las Vegas Bowl. Tonight, a matchup between the Pac-10 and Mountain West conferences as Oregon State, with a record of 7-5, and five, takes on 8-4, and four, New Mexico. Good evening, everybody, and welcome. I'm Sean McDonough. Delighted to have you with us, and happy holidays to you all, as tonight we get a look at two programs with very similar histories. As a matter of fact, for several decades, these were two of the worst programs in all of college football. If you go back to the early 60s until the late 90s, these two schools went to combine 70 seasons without appearing in a bowl game. But that has all changed over the last five or six years. They are clearly two programs on the rise, still looking for a little bit more respect and a chance to earn that tonight against each other. I'm joined by Rod Gilmore and Craig James. Gentlemen, schools with similar histories, and they each feature a terrific running back who led his conference in rushing this year. And one of those guys is ready for the NFL right now. The other guy will be soon. Steven Jackson of Oregon State, he's the real deal. He's ready for the NFL. He has the great size, the great speed, and he runs with power. Oh, and by the way, he can block and he can catch the ball out of the backfield. On the other side, Dontrell Moore, he will be there soon enough. He is not the same kind of runner as Steven Jackson. Not the power, he's a slasher with good speed. He sees a crease, and Craig, he's gone. He's in it, and he's out of it in a hurry. Yeah, well, my friend, I think he too is ready for the National Football League, but tonight he'll have to deal with the defense that's going to be looking for him. The backside will be critical. If you're on Oregon State's defense, Richard Sigler has got to go look him up and find him. Sigler is one heck of a football player. Oregon State has to play with tenacity, but re respect for the backside because Moore is so shifty, he can definitely hurt your defense. Two excellent runners going against two of the best rushing defenses in the nation. These two teams are both in the top seven nationally in that category. Oregon State of New Mexico from Las Vegas right after this. Continuation of our holiday gift to you, Capital One Bowl Week from the Las Vegas Bowl, which has moved this year, obviously, to Christmas Eve, where it is likely to stay in the coming years, we are told. Oregon State and New Mexico, we're pleased to be joined here in Las Vegas by Rob Stone. Hey, Sean, how are you? Good to have you here in Vegas with me. A little news about Stephen Jackson. He is a Las Vegas native, has about 100 family and friends in attendance just behind me, and they're going to be watching kind of a new aspect to his game, pass catching. When Coach Riley returned to Corvallis, he pulled Jackson into his office and said, this is something I really want to get you more involved in, the pass play game. So he took that challenge and took it to the receivers, started working out with the receivers, doing hand and cone drills. And Jackson always felt, you know, my receiving was pretty solid. He was excited with the fact that he could kind of display it more this season. He may be displaying it next year in the National Football League, and we have a lot more to talk about Jackson and his potential NFL future throughout the broadcast. And while you were speaking, Rob, we saw the rushing numbers of late. They've come down. We spoke with Steven a couple of days ago here in Las Vegas, and he said it's just been harder and harder because teams are putting eight, even nine men up there in the box against him. And the reality, gentlemen, too, is it's a very average offensive line that is trying to block for him. Well, I think that's right, and he certainly has been frustrated. The last couple of games, they haven't run the ball as well. Of course, they played Oregon and USC. That had something to do with it. But nevertheless, he has been frustrated that he hasn't had the big kind of a year that he thought he could have. Yeah, but you know what? If you're a great running back, you've got to get used to facing eight-man front, eight-man fronts. And Mike Riley is the kind of guy that once he sees an eight-man front, he's going to throw the football. And that's why this offense is such a big strike offense. Mike Riley, at his second stint as head coach at Oregon State, was the head man for two years left to go to the NFL. 
for the San Diego Chargers for three years as head coach, then one year as an assistant with New Orleans before returning to Oregon State. He hopes he's here now for a very long time at age 50. Across the way, Rocky Long coaching his alma mater in his sixth season as head coach. A terrific quarterback in his playing days. And the win total has come up every year since 1998. We talk about programs clearly on the rise. This is one of them at 8-4 and four this year. Yeah, and keep in mind that Rocky Long really first made his reputation at Oregon State as a defensive coordinator there. A lot of ties to Oregon State. He was there under Jerry Pettibone in the early and mid-90s. It was at Oregon State where he devised his 3-3-5 defense. Heavy on the blitz. Designed it in the basement of a gymnasium. We used to call it the dungeon. He and his fellow defensive assistants when he was working in Corvallis. New Mexico won the toss and deferred, so Oregon State will receive the kickoff. Aaron Barrett to kick off. Beautiful night here in Las Vegas. Very little breeze as the ball game begins. It's just enough breeze to knock it off the tee. Flags aren't doing anything, but the ball wobbled off the tee. And there wasn't much, much wind down on the field before, uh, before the game. We're down there, but it is chilly down there. <laughs> yeah. Chilly for you. You're yeah. cold I'm everywhere. You, exactly, man. It's, it's a nice warm evening <laughs> in the desert. Oh, come on. <laughs> and we're underway as Barrett drives it down to the goal line. Run back by Josh Hawkins. And he does not reach the 20. Stopped at the 16-yard line. Oregon State's quarterback is Derek Anderson, 6'6". Former All-State basketball player, junior from Scapoose, Oregon. West of Portland, he told us, a town of about 5,000. He tends to excite you or really irritate you. If you're an Oregon State fan, throws a lot of touchdowns, but has also thrown a lot of interceptions this year. 23 interceptions this season. Big problem throughout the year for the Beavers has been turnovers. They are minus eight for the year in turnover margin. One of the worst teams in the country in that category. Steven Jackson stopped for a loss back to the 15 on the first play from scrimmage. The Oregon State offense, the outstanding wide receiver is James Newson. He certainly has an NFL future. And Ewis was an all pac 10 tight end. And up front, it's Kilkenny, Losey, Brock, Sanchez, and Ninehouse. The best side of that line is the right side. Generally, when they need yardage in short yardage situations, they go to the right behind Sanchez and Ninehouse. The fake by Anderson and the throw to Newsom. He breaks a couple of tackles and has a first down out to the 31-yard line. 17-yard gain, 79th catch of the year for Newsom. That is a single-season Oregon State record. 3-3-5 defense. Ruck, Coulter, and Renteria, a very active front three. Their coaches feel they have the best linebackers in their conference, and Struther, Kowalski, and Spiegel. And the five defensive backs, Fulbright, Wiley, Ratcliffe, Golden, and Payne. Oregon State... Offense, number one in the Pac-10 in total yardage. They are a productive bunch. There's Jackson demonstrating that pass-catching ability that Rob Stone told you about, and Brandon Payne made the tackle for the Lobos. Well, one of the things to look for early on is how Derek Anderson handles the blitzing defense, and he told us that one of the things he really had to be good about was figuring out who the Mike linebacker is. Mm -hmm. and, and figuring out where the pressure is going to come from. If he figures out who the Mike linebacker is, then he can figure out that's probably where the pressure is coming from, and he can slide his protection that way. Yeah, I expect New Mexico like they're doing. They're going to be tight all night. Can they withstand the big play against him? Deep handoff to Jackson. And he did not get the first down. Stopped at about the 40-yard line by Kyle Coulter. The nose tackle. He's had a terrific season despite battling respiratory problems in the preseason. He 
deals with asthma and from time to time that caused an irregular heartbeat that they were able to diagnose and they monitor it very carefully. Not a very big guy, but he can play the game. And when I talk about this defense being stacked up there, you're seeing them up there trying to stop Steven Jackson. Third down and one. Jackson did not get there. Stuffed at the line of scrimmage by Nick Spiegel. Uh, Steven Jackson has talked about the frustration of facing an eight-man, nine-man front in the box. And this is it. Short yardage situation. Guys coming un un unblocked. Nick Spiegel. Nobody can block him. He's free to make this tackle. That's just too many guys in there that they can't get a hat on. And, and what they've done here is they've really made sure that backside, that they too are there and prepared for it. That extra guy, that, that extra man in the box is going to be something that Steven Jackson's going to have to deal with. Well, a huge penalty there against New Mexico. They had him stopped. It, it would have been fourth down and short, but an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. We spoke with Rocky Long yesterday. He talked about how both teams over the course of the season have a tendency to lose their composure from time to time. And we mentioned during the pregame show with Chris, Treb, and Mark how some animosity built up between these two teams during the bowl week. Two nights ago at the pep rally, there was some woofing, and they had to be separated. Well, they were fighting over the steak. They'd run out of uh, outback steaks, and, and New Mexico said, hey, we're not giving up our steaks to you guys. You can wait in line. I, I think they were looking for an excuse to woof at each other. <laughs> <laughs> They've been eyeballing each other for a few days, and I think they wanted something to get after one another about. Well, the penalty moves the ball to the 45-yard line. Anderson under pressure and goes down. Back at his own 44-yard line. D.J. Renteria with the sack. There is a flag now to the line of scrimmage. If it stands, it's a loss of 11. Mm. Another costly penalty. Officials from the Atlantic Coast Conference led by Joe Ryder. So Rocky Long and his defense coordinator. On the defense. Five yards, first down. His defensive coordinator, Jose Lewis, they like their defensive line as they match up against the Oregon State offensive line. But what they don't like are having lots of penalties. They want to play on the edge, but not have as many penalties. And they want to make Anderson's feet move. You know, watch Derek Anderson's feet moving tonight because they feel like when they can make him move and then make an adjustment, that's when he throws his uh, interceptions. First and five. Nine men right up near the line of scrimmage. Here comes New Mexico, and they dump it off quickly to the tight end, Tim Ewis. First down, Beavers inside the 25-yard line. 43rd catch of the year for Ewis. At a 16-yard gain, Billy Struther made the tackle. So Derek Anderson gets off to a good start. Can he recognize which guy is coming? He reads it correctly, sees where the pressure is coming from, see how the protection slides that way. His tight end comes open in the middle. Good play by Derek Anderson, recognizing the blitz and where it was coming from. Did you see Ewis reach up and grab the ball, though. He didn't let the ball come to his body. He went back and took it in before the defenders could get there and knock it out. Beavers on the move on the opening possession of the football game. Anderson trying to set up a screen, and it's incomplete. It's headed for Jackson. And it was broken up by D.J. Renteria. You talk about Anderson needing to read the right people and recognize the defenses and try to figure out who's coming. When we spoke with Paul Chris, the offensive coordinator for Oregon State, he said they really benefited from all the extra time that you have in a bowl situation, a month to prepare. He said the more you watch this New Mexico defense on film, you can start to get a little bit of a feel of what they're doing. It's not as healthy as healthy as it looks. Right, it's this 3-3-5, three, three, but at the snap, it's a 4-3. There's some kind of look, and that's what Rod's talking about. Make a defining moment. Who's the mic? linebacker and then who are the safeties second and ten and Jackson felt it behind the line of scrimmage the ball here. driven back to the 30 for a loss of five Marcus Parker a reserve defensive end sophomore from Garland Texas with the Marcus primary Parker. hit 
Guys, were you surprised when we talked to Rocky Long and he said, we can shut down the run again. We can we can contain Steven Jackson. I was stunned when he said that. How about you? No, I wasn't surprised because he knows that up front, that, that disguising that they do confuses the offensive linemen of Oregon State. He felt like he could get some penetration there, but he's right on target. Can he stop Derek Anderson throwing the football? Third down and 14. They need to get just inside the 15-yard line. Anderson under duress. Newsom went down to the ground. He wanted a flag, but there is none. Gabriel Fulbright had the coverage. And it'll be fourth down. They have an excellent field goal kicker. Well, Craig, that was a good example of your point about Derek Anderson's feet. And this penalty against Oregon State moves the ball back to the 34-yard line. New Mexico brought pressure, and Derek Anderson started moving. And when he moves, he's not as accurate. And you could see that on that, that last play. A lot of interceptions from, from Derek Anderson. This is an offense, though, that had 45 plays of 25 yards or longer. So, I mean, they can, they can hurt you, and he has the big play potential. When they've lost... The turnovers have killed them. In all five of their losses, they've thrown at least two interceptions. We're talking about leading the Pac-10 in offense, total offense, and total defense, and you're only seven and five. You know that there have been a lot of turnovers and penalties that have hurt. Here comes a blitz. They're setting up a screen. Jackson has some blockers. Jackson into the clear. Touchdown, Oregon State. Kilanemi in to attempt the extra point. He's one of the best place kickers in the country. And the extra point is good. A 34-yard touchdown pass to number 34. And plays 83 yards to drive. They take 501 off the clock. Beaver score on the first possession of the football game. On the board, aided by a couple of costly penalties against the New Mexico defense. Steven Jackson back in his hometown of Las Vegas. His dad, Steve, a pit boss at Caesars Palace. His mom, a real estate agent here in town. They moved out here from Arkansas. His parents are high school sweethearts. His dad, a Vietnam veteran, a Marine. Very close family. They've enjoyed experiencing the whole activities together this week. Ratcliffe brings it back and makes it only to the 20-yard line. And that was a pretty good, good job coaching. They identified here the blitz coming in in a third and long situation, recognizing tendencies, and Anderson does a nice job getting the ball out there to Jackson. Yeah, right, and just what you said right early in the, in the telecast about his catching ability, and what I wanted to find out was how shifty was he with those feet. You saw the shift, and then he takes the blow to the leg, but he's so that gum strong it did not impact him feet close to the ground as he made that cut. He has good balance. You can't coach that. I just, you just got it. J.C. Kelly has the Lobos up on the line, first and ten. On a walk-on, an Oregon native, the only Oregonian on this New Mexico team, going deep for Dwight Counter, one of the best deep threats in the nation. He averages nearly 25 yards per reception. The throw is off target. Brandon Browner had the coverage. And we look at the New Mexico offense. The brilliant Moore, Bird, more or less a blocker. Counter and baskets, the wide receivers, and Penley, the tight end. They're without Adrian Boyd for academic reasons, one of their key receivers. And they think that group might be the best offensive line in school history. They have three first-team All-Mountain West Conference performers up front this year in Lensmeyer, Terrell, and Cook. Option. Probably see this 10 to 12 times from New Mexico. And more stuff for a loss by Jason John Baptiste. Part of the front four that includes Siegert, Edwards, and Swancutt. Swancutt, the all time leading sack man at Oregon State. Siegler, a four year starter, one of the best linebackers in the country between Bray and Pollard. 
And in the secondary, the corners were a question starting out. But the freshman Browner has been terrific, as has Eric Williams, Mewson, and Turner, our veteran safeties. Loss of four on the play. There's Sigler, another Las Vegas native. Wasn't recruited by the local team here at UNLV. This game being played in the Rebels' home stadium. A handoff to Terrence Thomas, the wide receiver. And he stopped for a gain of a yard. There's Sigler, the middle linebacker. And so far, the Las Vegas natives making an impact. Jackson and Sigler on their return to their hometown. Yeah, there's a lot of strategy involved in this game today between these, these coordinators. And right now, New Mexico is trying to figure out exactly where the outside opportunities are. Right, right? They want to know, how are you lined up on my outside, whether tight end or tackle? Exactly. They want to see how they can run the option to keep Oregon State honest so that they can go back and pound them inside. Tyler Goss punting, standing at his two-yard line. Cole Clayson back for the punt for Oregon State. Four seconds to snap it. Wobbly kick that hit and stopped right at the 48-yard line. Just a 35-yard punt by Goss. 7-0 Beavers. They'll have the ball back when we come back to Las Vegas. ESPN's exclusive presentation of the 2003 Las Vegas Bowl. Brought to you by Las Vegas. Only Vegas. Home of the seven-day weekend. And by the Chrysler Pacifica. Well beyond the SUV. And our ESPN crew has certainly enjoyed our stay here in this exciting city, Las Vegas. Oregon State with the ball, leading 7-0. Just under eight minutes left in the first quarter. They scored on their first drive, an 83-yard drive. Here's Ewick, the tight end. To the 29-yard line. Brandon Ratcliffe made the tackle, but not before Anderson and Ewick connected for 22. Uh, you know, we talk about this 3-3-5. You got three down. You got your linebackers up here, and there are five corners and secondary people back there. And, Rod, what they're looking for is the middle of the field. Yeah, and then they go with the triangle re uh, uh, formation out there, getting three receivers out to the left, bringing U.S. back inside right where one of those five defensive backs should have been. <laughs> U.S. has already earned his degree in construction engineering he'd like to play in the nfl but if not he'll put that degree to good use he's also married get married in june to an oregon state graduate michelle davis lewis again close to another first down they'll mark him out at the 20 about a yard shy a gain of nine nick spiegel made the tackle they're so focused right now on the inside and Steven Jackson's running ability that that's really, uh, you know, for you as a tight end, look how patient he is, Rod. He's diligent. He stays inside, and the timing's there. That's almost impossible to defend when the tight end starts to block. You kind of give up on him, and then he just kind of leaks on out there. It's easy to see why he gets open that way. Already three catches for 47 yards for Ewis. Second and one from the 20. Steven Jackson breaks a tackle and is pulled down inside the 10 by the middle linebacker, Daniel Goronsky. Okay, what do you like better, the oh. footwork or the arm? Holy <laughs> mackerel. Watch, but, but, when, watch when he gets out here. This is a strong run. Run right past him. Now, go into the guy. Get right into him, man. Use that body. When he figures out that when, a, when somebody comes from the inside is much smaller than him, yeah. if he'll get into him and if he'll hit them before they do, Steven, he's going to run over that guy. Yeah, how about that little change of direction, Ooh. just a little pitter pat of the feet to get outside and then turn on the burst. Well, all night, Sean, we're going to talk about whether or not he should go to the NFL. We've all spoken with him and his family, and it's a theme for him and his family and this university. First and goal from the sixth. They fake it to Jackson. Into the back of the end zone, incomplete. Looking again for Tim Ewis. I don't know, Craig. I, I, I really don't have much of a discussion about it. I think he goes to the NFL. I have this belief that if you're a running back, there are only so many knocks that you can get in your body. Whether it's in high school, college, or pro, you've got so many carries. This guy's big enough, strong enough, fast enough, mature enough. He's got the support at home. He's ready. He's ready to go into the NFL. When he walks into the room, you take a look at him and you go, that is an NFL player. There's no doubt about it. He's built the part. 
Two tight ends in the game. New Mexico is so often the case showing blitz. Jackson trying to run right through it. Powers down to the three-yard line. Marcus Parker made the tackle. Sean McDonough with Craig James, Rod Gilmore, Rob Stone. Delighted to have you with us from the Las Vegas Bowl between Oregon State and New Mexico. The Lobos finished second in the Mountain West Conference this year behind Utah. And they're being dominated at the moment by the Beavers. 116 yards to minus three. And Oregon State looking to build on a seven to nothing lead. The third down and goal from the four. Anderson with a lot of time throws it too high. Through the back of the end zone looking for Mike Pass. And the field goal unit comes on for Oregon State. But that's the kind of throw that they're looking for from Anderson. Don't make a mistake. Put points on the board. Let your defense come out there to, to survive another one. Nothing wrong with taking three points. If you watch the, uh, the bowl game last night in Fort Worth, neither coach seemed to be interested in field goals. Angelini, senior from Monmouth, Oregon, originally enrolled at Oregon, but didn't think he had a kicking future there, transferred to Oregon State, and has been one of the best kickers in their history. His field goal good from 21 yards, and it's 10-0 Beavers. More than midway through the first quarter here in Las Vegas. The NBA on Christmas Day on ESPN and A. Back trips to the Las Vegas Bowl for New Mexico. They lost here last year 27-13 to UCLA. Their first back-to-back -back bowl trip since 1945 and 1946. And they're on the short end of a 10 to nothing score. Ilanimi will kick off. Gabriel Fulbright and Brandon Ratcliffe are back deep for the Lobos. High kick angled toward the far sideline, taken there by Ratcliffe. And he has running room. It's the kicker who takes him down. Ilanimi might have grabbed a face mask. When he pulled him down near the 50-yard line, but he saved the touchdown by getting him on the ground. A 40-yard return by Brandon Ratcliffe, a senior from Dallas. There is always a guy who is responsible for contain keeping the runner inside. You saw that little move to the inside that forced the contain guy to come inside and he gave up the outside, the sideline there. And you talk about a much-needed play for New Mexico. They needed a little boost right here because Oregon State is just faster than them right now. On the kicking team, 15 yards from the end of the run, first down. Boy, has he got a grapply voice tonight, huh? <laughs> that's great. Well, that's a, a kicker getting a face mask because he doesn't know how to tackle. It doesn't matter. If you bring him down like that, 15 more, it doesn't matter. Just get him to the ground. There's the second possession for Rocky Long's offense. They went three downs and out the first time around. Casey Kelly back to pass. They swing it out to Moore, and he dropped it. It's probably a good thing he did. As Jonathan Pollard was right there, ready to drop him for a loss. Pollard, another product of Las Vegas, the junior. They have eight players on the Oregon State team. Four of them are freshmen, but four of them are starters who are from Las Vegas. They've had a nice little pipeline going up there to Corvallis. Yeah, what's John Robinson doing over at UNLV letting these guys get out of his backyard? <laughs> a couple of them weren't all that highly recruited. Steven Jackson was. He was recruited by just about everybody out west in Nebraska and Tennessee. We're hot after him as well. In the case of Sigler, he had very few options. And off to Dontrell Moore. Bounces it outside to the right. It doesn't get very far. Pulled down at the 33-yard line by the safety Lawrence Turner. Another product of Las Vegas, Nevada. But, Craig, you talked about Moore's ability to cut back. Well, he does it this time. In Oregon State, as you talked about in the open, they stayed home on the backside to handle the cutback. And Eric Williams, the corner, did a great job coming off his man-to-man -man responsibility. Yeah, you know, Moore's going to have to learn that when you make that cut, when you go so far back backside, there's nobody over there to block that guy you got to cut it back and then get north again a little 
Chikoration, and they throw it back to the backup quarterback, Cole McCamey, who came into the game for this play, and it pays off. Michael Brunker, a wide receiver, threw the ball to McCamey, but there is a flag down. An 18-yard gain if it stands. It'll stand. It was a dead ball personal foul against New Mexico. One of their linemen came down and hit Richard Sigler from the backside. That was a terrible, stupid penalty. Sigler's lucky he didn't get blown up. Well, Rocky Long told us yesterday that both these teams feel like they have a chip on their shoulder because of what Sean mentioned in the open, for so long they were so bad and they want respect now. And sometimes that causes you to kind of push it a little bit to the edge. Well, penalties have been a problem for both of these teams throughout the year. Oregon State averages 112 yards in penalties. After the play, personal foul. Clipping on the offense. The offense have gotten a first down. 15 yards from the end of the run, first down. Rod, I think it's 59, Turner, who comes backside down the field, the left guard, is going to work his way down the field. And, and, and Sigler, 51 on defense, is standing around, and, and it's, a, it's a real late shot. I don't, know, I don't know if we can see it here. Well, so many times, offensive linemen come down to clean up a pile, and that's just to knock off any defensive player who's around. And, and it's only in the last couple years I've seen it called as much as it's being called now. What a nice catch by McCamey, the backup quarterback, freshman from Artesia, New Mexico. He will be their quarterback next year. They say he's the best athlete on their offense. Runs a 4 5 40 as a quarterback at 6 2 and 200 pounds. So it is a first down. The ball back near the 30 yard line, and Dontrell Moore gets a couple, and Richard Siegler tripped him up. Casey Kelly, the starting quarterback, came as a walk-on, was not highly recruited out of the Portland, Oregon area, was an all-state baseball player in high school and was drafted by the Colorado Rockies in the 32nd round. First baseman that decided he wanted to pursue football. He came to New Mexico as a walk-on and now is their leading quarterback in the history of the program in terms of number of wins in the start. He is 19. He has a man open in the end zone. Touchdown, Hank Basket. And, Craig, that route is not a surprise. Oregon State worked on that precise route for about seven minutes in practice the other day over and over again because they knew that in man coverage, the way they play it, that's what they were going to see. Yep, play action to one side and throw it back the other side, either a trailing tight end coming across the, the defense or single coverage. The extra point up and good by Wes Sunker. The kickoff return put New Mexico in great shape, and they cap it off on the 27-yard TD reception by Basket, his third of the year. 10-7, Beaver. <laughs> and welcome back to Las Vegas and the 12th annual Las Vegas Bowl. New Mexico on the board on the touchdown catch by Basket, a terrific athlete, sophomore from Clovis, New Mexico, a seven-foot high jumper in high school. As a redshirt freshman, he suffered a spinal concussion during two-a-days, and they thought he was in bad shape for a while. He lacked movement for several hours. He was out of action for a couple of months. Here's Josh Hawkins running back to Zunku kickoff. Out to the 22-yard line, a 21-yard return. Let's go back to the touchdown. Here is Basket working on Brandon Browner, who was the freshman of the year in the Pac-10. He gives him the old post-corner route, and Browner worked on this and practiced an awful lot, Craig, but he bought on the post. You see him here. Yeah, exactly. Well, here's, that's the problem there. Turn to the safety. Just He just came up too hard on the play action. And Mark Banker, the defensive coordinator, stressed that yesterday in our meetings with him. Fellas, I've told our team 
play action one side. They're working somebody backside, and you have to play with passion and aggression, but vision to see what happens behind the play. And give Basket credit for a great catch. Yeah, pretty good throw, too, huh? Anderson, a little bit of a jump throw, looking for Ewis. And it's incomplete off the hands of the tight end. Tomorrow, Christmas night, 8 p.m. Eastern time, it's Capital One Bowl. We continuing with the Hawaii Bowl. It's Houston. It's had a nice turnaround season against the Hawaii Warriors. Hawaii would like to split time at quarterback. The record setter, Timmy Chang. Senior backup, Jason Wielden. Hawaii's second appearance in the Hawaii Bowl. They lost to Tulane last year. They're six and one in their home stadium this year. That's tomorrow night at eight. Steven Jackson breaking tackles, but not getting very far. A gain of a yard, perhaps two. Billy Struther, the outside linebacker, made the play. Here's Rob Stone. Tons of pushing, shoving, talking after about just every single play I've seen down here on the sideline. Both staff stressing to the men, guys, do not get caught up in this emotion. Rod, you kind of touched on it a few moments ago, Rocky Long. You know, the philosophy of both these teams are kind of the same, you know. Both downtrodden programs up now because of hard work and toughness. They spent so much time thinking that no one respects them that they have that air of, we're going to make you respect us. And both teams are trying to respect one another the hard way tonight. Third and nine, Anderson with time, and it is almost intercepted. And that might have gone for a touchdown for Gabriel Fulbright if he'd been able to take it in near the 30-yard line. And Mike Haas was the intended receiver. And, Craig, when the NFL scouts test a quarterback, that's the deep out that they look to see. And the and timing's off, wasn't it? Yeah. You got to get that ball there sooner off the break because it's in the air a long time, and a good corner will jump on it. And, and how about the kickoff return by New Mexico a while ago to pump a little life into their football team? They took advantage of it, scored the touchdown, and the defense finally did something. Carl Toby on the punt, averaging 41 yards per kick this year. Three-year starting punter. He got it off under a pretty heavy rush. And it goes out of bounds near the 45-yard line. 33-yard punt for Toby. Let's take a look at our AOL rushing comparison. These were the season numbers entering tonight's game for Jackson and Moore. Quite similar. How about that yards per carry? 5.4 for Mr. Moore, and that's uh, that's very impressive. Both good football players, and we're seeing the respect these defensive have for them tonight, Rod, because they're up there bunched up trying to stop the run. And we talked about Steven Jackson's frustration. You look at that 116 yards a game. I mean, he felt he could do much better than that. And he was fighting for every one of those yards each week with the eight, nine men in the box that he was seeing. Jackson, seven carries for 11 yards. Moore, three carries for zero yards. They're going for the deep ball again. And it flutters down incomplete in the direction of counter. They take a number of deep shots a game. We're talking about eight, 10, 12 deep balls a game called for Casey Kelly by the offensive coordinator, Dan Dodd. And they should probably take at least that many tonight because they will get man-to-man -man coverage almost all night long. All this guy does is win when you talk to Rocky Long. He's not the kind of quarterback who dazzles you, not physically imposing, doesn't have the big arm, but he's very smart. Kelly has already graduated with a degree in marketing. He's working toward his MBA right now. And as we said earlier, he's the all-time winningest quarterback at New Mexico, and that is the most important number. Of course, in the past that they've had, it didn't yeah. take him long to get there, did it? <laughs> and uh, one quarterback not on that list is Stoney Case, who played in the NFL, who many believe was the best quarterback in the history of New Mexico. Coach Long, a pretty good player himself. Kelly will run. And he ducks down at the 49-yard line of Oregon State. Brandon Browner covered him. Kelly does have some running ability. If you give him the opportunity to take off, he will. He's rushed for 214 yards in the last five games. He's a tough guy. He's been banged up throughout his career. Had a lot of a lot of stuff. Hasn't he had a lot of stuff happen to him? You know what's funny about that record? He passed up Rocky Long, who was a quarterback in New Mexico, right? And Rocky, they talk about Rocky's career win totals. I think he had like 15 or 16. Mm -hmm. What was he doing? <laughs> <laughs> they weren't very good back then. <laughs> He's doing a better job as a head coach, that's for sure. 
Edie Cox in it, the running back. He backs up more. He's had a couple of 100-yard games this season himself, but he gets nothing there. Tackled by Trent Bray, outside linebacker, whose dad, Craig, was on the Oregon State staff as a defensive coordinator for a few years. Just a couple of years ago, he's now at Arizona. Trent's mom played volleyball at Western Michigan, and for a while she was the head volleyball coach at Washington State, so he gets a lot of coaching. By, what do you think that may be more by mom or more by dad? <laughs> I know in my family, Maryland's always given the coaching points. Old place him back for the punt from Tyler Goss. Very high kick. And a fair catch made by Clayson at the 12 yard line. 38 yard punt. Let's check in again with Rob Stone. Well, Sean, a lot of speculation regarding Steven Jackson. Will this be his final collegiate game? I spoke with his older sister, Rhonda, today, who was kind of handling all the off the field NFL speculation in the news and the research. She told me she's talked about 25 different agents. Just last week, they sent a letter to the NFL. You know, kind of get an evaluation of where he might go in the draft, what he needs to work on, et cetera, et cetera. Decision, she told me, could come possibly as soon as right after this game. And an interesting side note, I asked him, you know, hey, where would he like to play if he had his choice? She lit up, smiled, the whole family, and dad, big fans of guess who? How about them Cowboys? Ah. <laughs> Here's a quick pass to Newsom with blockers. And he's pulled down from behind at the 36-yard line. 24-yard game. Brandon Ratcliffe made the tackle, or Newsom might have gone the distance. An all-pack-10 receiver here you're watching. Watch how he gets this ball and makes yards after the catch. Gets a good block on this little screen, but then he kicks it into the extra gear. And a nice stiff arm there as well. This is a guy who had a really bad car accident a few years ago, has a steel rod in his leg, and he's come back all the way. He's had a very arduous career path to become a great player. Anderson going deep for Harris, and it's overthrown. Newsom grew up in a very tough neighborhood in Stockton, California. Did not qualify academically at Oregon State coming out of high school. So while he was trying to get his academic house in order, he went up to Corvallis and got a job working at the football stadium, sweeping the stands, working on the field, and did qualify academically. And then, as Rod said, just as he was ready to go, and begin his playing career at that very bad car accident that set him back. But once he's been able to play, he has been one of the best wide receivers, if not the best in the history of the program. When you talk about that bunch they had a couple of years ago on the Fiesta Bowl team, there's some competition for that honor. Anderson throws it short for George Gillette. Not the same George Gillette who owns the Montreal Canadiens. Stopped at the 43-yard line. It'll be third down and two. You nugget, man, you. I like that. But you, you know what I noticed out here is Steven Jackson's not been in this series. Giving him a little bit of a breather. But uh, I feel like the more you give the ball to, J to Jackson, the more he's gonna, the better he's going to do for you. They're going to have to get him the ball on the outside throwing it. If you're Steven Jackson, Craig, you go to NFL right now? Oh, absolutely. I'll I finish the game. He's ready. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, in regards to I got I'll follow up a little bit. How about them Cowboys? I'll tell you about that. Here's a reverse for Newsom. And he has the first down. A short game, but enough to pick up the first down. Brandon Payne, the quarterback, made the play. You're a man of many bucks. Who, which uh, Jackson is on what bill? Is it the, the you know, $50 bill or something? Uh, the 20. Huh? Would it be the 20? Yeah, you're loaded 20. with 20s. So let me tell you about them Cowboys and Steven Jackson. <laughs> He's going to go wherever they give him the most Jacksons. Well, whoever yeah, drafts him. But I got the distinct impression, guys, when we visited with him two days ago, that he is going to go. When we asked him about it, the first two things he said were, in my position, you're one injury away from your career being over. Mm -hmm. And he talked about the inconsistent line play and how that's been a little bit frustrating for him, too. Bumped off short for Dwight Wright. He's Jackson's backup. He showed a good burst of speed before he got banged down. At the 42-yard line by Nick Spiegel. That's a pretty big weapon they have sitting over there on the sideline. Well, Sean, just to finish up on your point, if Steven Jackson were to come back next year, he would have two new offensive linemen and a new tight end and a new wide receiver out there. So if he thought it was bad this year with eight or nine guys in the box, it's going to be just as tough, if not tougher, next year. And you're right, there's the risk of injury. And he is, in my view... He's probably the best back coming out, the most complete all-around back coming out. 
Well, you know, you could maybe debate that a little bit, but in terms of is he ready to come out? Give me one guy. Well, I mean, is he ready to come out? I, there's no question, and that's why the coaching staff, they all accept that. They re they recognize Steven Jackson's ready to play in the NFL, so they're not going to be disappointed or, you know, they're going to miss the guy. No question mm -hmm. about that. They're a long way from him reaching 100. Matter of fact, that was one of the points of debate, apparently, at the rally the other day. The Lobo defenders were hollering at Jackson that he wouldn't get 100 against them here tonight, and he said, yes, I will. And they fought over the sticks. Didn't really fight, just whooped the line. Oh, Little flea flicker, looking for Haas. He has it. Touchdown! <laughs> 42 yards, second long touchdown play. They had the 34-yarder earlier on the catch and run to Steven Jackson and coach Riley's Beavers will lead by 10 if they convert the extra point. Uh, even trickeration begins with protection. How about that? They had plenty of time Anderson did. Ass, another big play receiver. He averages about 25 yards per reception. And that one went for 42. Extra point up and good by Illinimi. Derek Anderson and Oregon State off to a great start. That is the end of the first quarter. The score of the Beavers 17 and the Lobos 7. attention on the star running backs the star of the game for the first quarter has been Derek Anderson the Oregon State quarterback has thrown two touchdown passes 10 out of 15 for 188 yards in one quarter he's coming off a 485 yard performance in their regular season finale the loss at USC that was a school record passing game for Anderson but he also was picked off four times he's avoided the pick so far. Of course, when you play the best, you become the best, right? You play USC's defense, you see the speed of the game, and all of a sudden, Rod, now that you play New Mexico, that's not USC's defense. No, they're doing a very good job of making sure that no one knocks Anderson around. He's got time. There's Anemi. Takes it down to the five, taken by Dwight Counter. And he's back to the... 24-yard line, uh, a 19-yard return. Sean, we made a big point that number 34 was not in there pretty much that entire series. He came in for this particular play for the flea flicker, and the play action rod drew them up. And absolutely, Osei Lewis, the D coordinator, told us they cover with pressure. There was no pressure on Anderson, and the coverage was not there. New Mexico understands that their corners cannot run with the receivers of Oregon State, and they have to get to the quarterback. Hoff got behind the latest defensive back to become a victim. First and ten Lobos. And they come into this game having won three in a row. And seven of the last eight after a one and three start to the season. Dontrell Moore gets nothing. And that's been the case throughout so far as we take a look at the game track brought to you by Corbell. A dynamic duo, Jackson, really the leader of this thing. He comes home and he's had a touchdown and he's played big, catching the ball as well. Yeah, I think the outside game is really going to have to throw the football and James Newsom has opened that up. And how about Anderson? He's been airing it out. He's been the difference in this ball game, opening things up for Steven Jackson by really tossing some long, beautiful touchdown passes. Credit more with a yard gain. He now has four carries for one yard. The sophomore from Roswell, New Mexico. And he did a dance to get a few there. From Roswell, New Mexico, we asked him if he'd ever seen any UFOs. Of course, that community famous for UFO sightings. He told us that when he was in high school, once at a stoplight, he was abducted by aliens. He had us going. <laughs> he I'm telling you, it was a great story. We, we got off our chair, we were falling asleep in there, and all of a sudden he starts telling the story. It was believable. <laughs> He's a pretty funny kid. <laughs> I liked it. I, you know, hey, you know, we always like guys that are smarter than us, right? Well, we meet most of the Took me about we a meet are that way. Well, a minute before I figured out what UFO was, but after that, I got well, I got along with the story. <laughs> you understood him when he said basketball, though. Yeah. <laughs> frustrated basketball player. You were all over that one. Oh, yeah, the frustrated part. 
Third down and five. Casey Kelly sacked back at the 20-yard line. Chaz Scott. Well, check that. Richard Ziegler with the sack for Oregon State, their first. 51, Ziegler usually lines up six yards off the ball, but because of his tenacity, you see how he goes and he pushes Rod out. Guy, that guy's strong. When they cut his legs out from under him while they go on that cheap shot, that lit his fire. Great shot. He gets in there, occupies two guys, and then Chaz Scott is able to come free and make the sack. Scott got the first hand on Kelly, and then Ziegler got him on the ground. And Goss will punt on fourth down and 14. Cole Clayson standing back at his own 40-yard line. Spiraling toward the near sideline. And out of bounds at the 40. A 40-yard punt and no return. A happy homecoming to Las Vegas for Sigler and the Beavers. Airport? Well, my name is Jim. I just love the smell of your limo, Jim. Oh, yeah, well, it's a new car. I love that new car. Yeah, I wish it was mine. It looks so good, Jim. It's leather. <laughs> Here we are. I'll meet you at the polo match in two, okay? Yeah. I know. I know. Well, Mommy's going to be the end. Welcome back to the Las Vegas Bowl here at Sam Boyd Stadium. About 15 minutes from the Strip in downtown Las Vegas. Tommy Connor, Rod Gilmore, Craig James, and Rob Stone, our ESPN crew. Glad to have you with us. Happy holidays to you all. Happy holidays. You know you could sing. I can't. Okay. Oh, man. Steven Jackson bounces off a hit at the line of scrimmage and took what should have been no gain. And turned it into a gain of about nine. Yes. Out to the 49-yard line. Give that up. <laughs> now, you talk about, they, you hear people say, pl play with your pad level. Look at his pads. Boom. Huh? If you don't get to that big fellow's leg, he's not coming down. Yes. Is that power or is that power? Oh. <laughs> Happy holidays. You think that guy's got jingle bells going off in his helmet right now? <laughs> Woo. See, and that's why he's ready for the NFL. A lot of these kids out here are shifting. They think in the NFL you can run around people. He's ready for that. He can run through those arm tackles and bodies. Leader of the Pac-10, 12th in the nation at 116 rushing yards per game. On second and short, he has the first down, but a few more as he skipped along the far sideline to the 41. Knocked out by Gabriel Fulbright. Here's Rob. Now the Lobos defensive line suffering a big bow. They've been blow. They've been going without starting left end DJ Renteria. He took a blow in that right calf in the first series. You see it's heavily taped up right now. He went back out, tried to give it a go. He's back on the bench. He's having big time problems trying to push up on it, get any acceleration. They haven't ruled him out yet, but he's looking very dicey. And, and that's a tough blow there because they might, if they start getting run on, wanted to put him at nose tackle instead of Coulter to give him some more size up front. We just saw Coulter bounce off Jackson. Renteria, first team, all Mountain West Conference performer this season. Kind of the Imelda Marcos of the global program. He told us when we were out in Albuquerque a few weeks ago, he has over 60 pairs of shoes. Most of them are sneakers. That's not right. That's just not right. Well, he just could, he could have stinky feet or something and need to have, like, a good cycle going. You ever consider that? <laughs> I really don't know if we want to consider that. I wonder who has, does he have more shoes or than Rob has, uh, than Rod has hats? <laughs> yeah, that's true. Okay. I got a couple hats, that's true. You got a lot of hats. A lot of hats. Good hats. And that new telephone deal you got going with around your ear all the time, that throws me off. Anderson sets up the tight end screen to Ewis. And he is down at the 31 yard line. <laughs> Let's see the uh, latest uh, model that you have just in time for <laughs> the holidays. What do we, like does one? this thing have a name? No, it's just a hat. And it matches the suit, though. That, I mean, the thing hat. about Rob is, is you just, you've got style and grace. <laughs> it, and it, it just, no, it, I have, I have a bald you. head, so then I, I have hats because they get cold. It is shiny at times. <laughs> you got any extras I can borrow? <laughs> got a couple. What does it say on your hat? It says Kango. Yeah. Cheap plug for the, uh, the hat company, I guess. I'll tell you what, you're looking good always. Oh, yeah. Okay. How was the bowl of soup? 
No. <laughs> you buy that hat, you get a bowl of soup. And <laughs> 50 left in the half. We'll return to the Las Vegas Bowl in a moment. ESPN's exclusive presentation of the 2003 Las Vegas Bowl. Brought to you by GMC. We are professional grade. And by Sonic. It's not just good, it's Sonic good. Well, somewhere up there in the stratosphere. Yeah. Uh, the James family, right? Yep. Your kids are going to go. There's a roller coaster at the top of that thing, they tell us. My boys were fired up. I know they did it. I'm not sure about my girls. They may have chickened out. Third down, less than a yard. Steven Jackson gets a yard and a half for the first down inside the 30. Oregon State with the ball on a 10-point lead. 10:44 left till halftime. 12 first downs to one. I, I really believe, and I don't know. I feel like this is one of those games where Oregon State and, and the speed that they played against all season is really coming out. I, I expected there'd be a little bit of a difference in this game. Yeah, they, they seem to be just a step and a half faster than New Mexico, and I think that's where you can really get a habit. Well, you've seen all your guys, when they can avoid the mistakes, the penalties and the turnovers, they're a very good team. Anderson throws, caught by Hass. Hass, a former walk-on, he's had some big games. At 208 yards receiving against USC, including a 90-yard pass from Anderson. And he had 225 yards receiving on eight catches against Stanford this year. You know what? Uh, defensively, though, for, for New Mexico, the experience they have with Rocky Long and his system, and these guys are veterans in this system, they have the ability on the sidelines and at halftime to make adjustments. Yeah, but you know something? Right now, they need some because they're not getting any pressure on Anderson at all. They're rolling him out, and he's in the pot, and he's identifying the blitz, and he's safe. Uh, short drops and quick passes. A little roll and throw and catch by Ewis. Ewis has been a standout. He seems to have another first down inside the 20. Brandon Ratcliffe chopped him down. And I like this kid. This U.S. tight end is very good. Look at the discipline. He gets a chip block to allow the time to be for the ball to be thrown to the outside. And excellent hands. No one is going to be a quick play. Rod, that is just, that's really a talented football player there. Yeah, poor Sidney Wiley, who was covering him and then going after the quarterback, was in no man's land. Either you stay with the tight end or you go after the quarterback, and you've already been bumped around by a 250 pounder. First and 10. From the 18-yard line, Lobos rush five. Anderson throws, and it is caught by Joe Newton, the second-team tight end. Freshman from Roseburg, Oregon, a very highly recruited player out of high school. This is the best first half I've seen out of Derek Anderson all season long, and not just because he's on the money, but because he's throwing well on the move. And he hasn't shown that much in the past, but tonight, on the move, he's been on the money. I, I watched in pregame how, how strong his arm was. And, and the ball, when you see a guy throw it hard, it, looked like, it looks like it's moving up and down as it goes to the receiver. He's moving backwards right now and has a quick release, and it's strong. First and goal. Jackson running left, running to the goal line. Touchdown. Well, one thing about it, if, if you miss him in the backfield and he gets a little head going there, it's going to be tough to stop. And the ball did cross the plane. Touchdown. That is not a fumble. There is nothing shy about that guy. He will certainly dip his shoulder and take you on. Look at those eyes. Huh? You see that eyes? And that, that is determination. Try to blind it by your tie. Oh. Extra point up and good. Three-yard touchdown run by Jackson. That's a very nice Christmas it's, it's Christmas Eve. Very Christmas Eve. <laughs> Definitely a once-a-year title. Mr. Banker. Back to Las Vegas in a moment. <laughs> Steven Jackson with another touchdown for Oregon State. The Beavers push their lead to 17 points as he capped the 60-yard drive. 
36 <laughs> career rushing touchdowns now. And with his total yardage tonight, he's also set the single season record at Oregon State for all purpose yardage. 15 first downs for the Beavers to one for the Lobos. Hey, you know what? Looking at that guy, if, if Bill Parcells is lucky enough to get him, holy mackerel. Well, the Navy's kick comes down to Gabriel Fulbright. Flag down, Fulbright down at the 28-yard line. 23-yard return. Fourth penalty of the night against New Mexico. Not much going right for Rocky Long. But one of the problems offensively is that they have not been able to run much option. Holding on the receiving team, 10 yards from the end of the run, first down. They haven't been able to run much option, and they haven't been able to get that eighth guy out of the box so that they can run inside. The option helps them do that. So they got to come up with a way to get that done. Well, Dontrell Moore rushed for 1,400 plus this year, and he's he's a non-factor in this game. And this offensive line for New Mexico, he mentioned, regarded by many as the best in school history. The one that draws the most frequent comparison is the one that blocked for Coach Long back in the early 70s. They uh, have had their hands full with this front, and they do again. Kelly to the rescue as he got away from the pressure. And got a few. Jason Jean Baptiste made the tackle. Well, you talk about this this big hit men offensive line, and they are good. They're center, left guard, left tackle on this formation on the left side here. They're all conference players. Watch the stunt. Watch the twist. The defensive tackle, 98, pushes out number 75. And it created an opportunity and havoc up there. And they're not playing like hit men right now. They're they're receiving. You only want to do that on Christmas. Yes, yes. You don't want to do it when you're on the football field. And the whistle stopped the play. And a timeout called by New Mexico. With 7.53 left in what has been a difficult first half for Rocky Long and the Lobos. They trail by 17. We'll come back to Las Vegas right after this. So I have to go back to my convention. Yeah, I know, but I have a convention. Bueno, come on. I have to go to my convention. I know. I wish I could stay. We got married. I have to go. I love you. I'll call you. But you know, one more thing. Yeah. Oh, you smell so good. Washington State looks to stop Cedric Benson in Texas. The Pacific Line Holiday Bowl, Tuesday at 8. It's all part of Capital One Bowl Week on ESPN. Michigan State battles the Blackshirt defense of Nebraska. The MasterCard Alamo Bowl, Monday at 9 Eastern. It's all part of Capital One Bowl Week on ESPN. Experience Las Vegas the way it used to be while enjoying the luxuries of today. The Golden Nugget. Call 1-800-8-GOLDEN for reservations. For the timeout for the Lobos. They're looking at second down and six. The I formation behind Casey Kelly. And the option pitch to Moore and it's on the ground. <laughs> And it is Oregon State's ball as Chaz Scott recover the fumble. Guys, New Mexico hasn't faced a team this fast since they faced Washington State early in the season. And, and you know, when you watch the swan cut number 90 on the outside, how quickly he got after the quarterback. And the pitch is bad. There's no aggression at all on the offensive front of New Mexico, which has been their strength, and they had to rely on them. These guys are too quick and too fast. I mean, that's that's the story up front. 
tenth lost fumble of the year for New Mexico. Rocky Long thought there were a lot of comparisons, Rod, between Washington State and Oregon State. Very similar teams. New Mexico gave Washington State a pretty good game up in Pullman, lost by 10. That was back in mid-September. They've lost only once since, and that was a game against UNLV when they were played by turnovers. Big hit. Jackson lost the ball, but went out of bounds at the 10-yard line. Brandon Payne delivering the pop to Jackson. He's too big to jump that high. Did you see him leap this guy? Watch this. He's just an athlete. 30-something inch vertical jump that can run like he does. You know, when you when you leave your feet, you've lost control of your uh, your body. And not, not very many good things happen. I used to have a coach tell me, when you leave your feet, young man, you may not come back to the huddle. <laughs> Pretty good big night rushing. Did have the long catch and run for the 34-yard touchdown reception. Second and six from the 11. Jackson running right again inside the five. Touchdown! I think he heard you. Did you see the pause, the patience, the speed, but the pause, and then the burst? You know, you talk about gears. That's a gear right there. It's a chain. <laughs> it's really the other way around. Hey, <laughs> Newsom. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You're going to be tired. <laughs> He's carried that offense for so much of his career. Unsportsmanlike conduct penalty against Oregon State. will be assessed here on the extra point, so it'll be a lengthy try. Rilanimi. Now I think they're asking Rocky Long, do you want it on the kickoff or on the point? 15-yard penalty has the option to be penalized on the try or the kickoff, be penalized on the kickoff. Does Joe Ryder, the referee, sound like Nick Nolte? Isn't it Nick Nolte, the actor? Yeah. Huh? Sounds like he gargled with Drano. <laughs> Still got it in there. Might be a little bit of Johnny Most, the legendary uh, basketball announcer with okay. the Celtics. I don't know why they moved the ball before they consulted New Mexico, though. They walked off the yardage on this extra point, then they put the ball back when Rocky Long said, no, we'd like it on the kickoff. And then Amy drives it through, and the Stephen Jackson show continues. Impressive performance by this entire Beaver team. They've opened up a 31-7 lead with 7.01 left in the half. I'm Steven Jackson, the Oregon State great running back. I'm back home in Vegas. Viva Las Vegas. After this, you get to know a lot more about me. Bad news for New Mexico is that they really don't have a, an offense second. Coming back to Vegas is very special. I get to play in front of family and friends and a, and a bunch of group of uh, guys that let them know how I was living and how I'm doing it back in Vegas. And uh, all my hometown people get to come check me out also. The best part about living in Vegas probably has to be the lights and you know all the action that goes around here. You have the fighting times and different fights and events. And um, everyone's willing to come here and take a tour and take a little piece of Vegas back home with them. And welcome back to Las Vegas. A happy homecoming for Stephen Jackson. Two rushing touchdowns, also one receiving. The bowl record is four touchdowns in a game. So he needs one more to tie. The Las Vegas bowl record. Well, the good news for New Mexico is there's a long way to go. Even Jackson's fans quite happy with what he's been doing. That penalty for unsportsmanlike -like conduct assessed now on the kickoff, so Alanini kicks it from the 20. Brandon Ratcliffe. And he fights for every inch and gets out to the 36. A 24-yard return by Ratcliffe. This is not an offense that likes to drop back and throw it all over the place. They frequently run about 75% of the time. That's going to be hard to do now. 
Well, they have to remain patient, though. I mean, if, if they become helter-skelter now, this thing could really get away from them. They just need to get some confidence and actually make a first down. Yeah, that'd be a good start. Just get a first down here. D.D. Cox in at running back. And he takes the handoff. He doesn't have any more success than Dontrell Moore has had. Mitch Mewson, the junior from Forest Grove, Oregon, the safety, made the tackle. Too fast. They're too fast to get outside. Yeah, and you know what? And I'll give you an example of that, Rob, what we're talking about. Watch the guard pull. Left guard pulls New Mexico. Look at 98 in the back side, though. He took away the cutback. And so the speed of the interior linemen of Oregon State are just taking away any opportunities for the uh, New Mexico runners. Yeah, there is no cutback. <laughs> there is no sideline. <laughs> this is the largest deficit New Mexico has faced this season. The previous deficit, 21 points at halftime at Texas Tech. 21 nothing. They lost that game by 14. D.D. Cox again tripped up by Chaz Scott. Had a lot of injuries at linebacker, so Scott has played more than anticipated when the season began. This is about the fifth or sixth linebacker, but he's played a lot. Played just about the whole game against USC in the regular season finale due to injuries to Pollard and to Seth Lacey, who was their starter at strong side linebacker, who's out with a shoulder and neck injury. Third down at eight. Red line marking the line of scrimmage on your screen. The yellow, the line they need to make for the first down. It's a short gain, well short of the yellow line to Terrence Thomas, a senior from Albuquerque. And it'll be fourth down and about five. You know, guys, I, I do believe that this offense misses Adrian Boyd. I mean, counter is a deep threat, but Boyd caught 41 passes on the season and it's hard when you lose that in your last game. Tyler Goss to punt again. His fourth punt of the night. Again, very high. Mason. Spins out to the 20. 45-yard punt, four-yard return. Friends, some great NBA action coming up for you. Tomorrow on ESPN at 2.30, it's the Cleveland Cavaliers in Orlando to take on the Magic. Cavs have won three straight. After their terrible start, Orlando has won six of 10. Facing McGrady averaging over 24 points per game. And on ABC, the coverage begins tomorrow at 5.30 Eastern Time with a doubleheader Dallas and Sacramento and Houston and the Lakers. New Mexico, everybody up on the line. And that's dangerous because once Jackson gets past the line of scrimmage, there are very few defenders there, and he goes for 14. Yeah, it, it really is dangerous, but that's the way they have to play the game. New Mexico plays, get up in your fanny. Uh, what, what, I forget what he said. We're going to bend a little bit. We're not going to break, and we're going to get after your fanny. And getting after your fanny means you're around the line of scrimmage. Yeah, Rocky Long said that when he first started running his defense, he told Jerry Pettibone back at Oregon State, I, I might stop people, or we might give up 100 points. And right now, they're not really stopping Oregon State tonight. And you have to have a head coach who's willing to have that kind of confidence and patience. Jackson again. They've had a lot of luck running to the right. A flag thrown to the official deep down the field. Normally, you would expect a holding call. Jackson went out of bounds at the 43. And, and Rocky Long <coughs> saying, you know, it's good that I am the head coach because I can say I have patience for that kind of game. We may give up a bunch of points from time to time. And he is actively involved in calling the defenses, working with the defensive coordinator, O.C. Lewis. On the offense, 10 yards on the spot of the foul, first down. O.C. Lewis, an Oregon State graduate, he was a great player at Oregon State, a ball Pac-10 linebacker back in the mid-80s. We're at the Las Vegas Bowl. 
Oregon State and New Mexico. All Beavers to this point. As they lead 31 to 7, under four minutes left now in the first half. After the walk off, the ball back on the 31 yard line. They're having trouble getting the play called in the huddle. The clock was down to three. They were just breaking the huddle. So a timeout called by Oregon State. Three fifty-eight left in the half. You probably know Chicago's all-pro linebacker Brian Erlocker is a New Mexico alum. But how much do you know about the Big Bears' career as a Lobo? The Athletic Trivia question is coming up. The University of New Mexico has provided higher education for generations of New Mexicans who cherish the natural beauty of our state and the contributions of our diverse people. Today, as a leading research university, UNM is charting a bold course for the future with nationally recognized programs in the sciences, arts, and engineering. It all takes place in a land of near mystical beauty. Come explore New Mexico. Find out what it means to live, learn, and work in the land of enchantment. And we're back at the Las Vegas Bowl at Sam Boyd Stadium, home of the UNLV Rebels. They teased you with the athletic trivia question, so let's pose it to you on this Christmas Eve. Brian Erlocker played linebacker and free safety at New Mexico in the late 90s. What other positions did he play in his college career? I have an idea. You do? You want uh, to uh, no, let no, the people no, 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 I'm not going to say or yeah. figure it out wait till for a minute or two. Fred, you know, don't you? Whatever he wanted to play. <laughs> <laughs> That's about right. <laughs> First down 12 from the 31-yard line. After the Beavers timeout, Anderson throws it up for grabs, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Brandon Ratcliffe, and he runs it back inside the 40-yard line. We'll mark him down at the 36. Really the first core decision by Anderson today is he just hung one down the middle of the field. Well, you're absolutely right. And after the play, he complained that he wanted Newsom to run flatter. Newsom was obviously running a deeper route. Anderson was telling him, run it flatter in front of the safety. Yeah, Anderson was looking for a little more help from Newsom on that one for sure. But you notice what... New Mexico did. They made him move the pocket, made him move his feet. When you move his feet, may, he makes mistakes. Leads the nation with 24 interceptions for Ratcliffe, his fourth pick. <laughs> Kelly kept and went down to the 34-yard line, a gain of two. <laughs> Well, Rocky Long's having no success offensively on first down, and, and they've been trying to run the football on first down. I think, in my opinion, they're going to have to throw the ball. And I know it's not their character to, to jump out there and throw the football a bunch, but they're going to have to open it up. Well, they got a lot of field here, and they're going to get man coverage again. And remember, the, the post corner route worked for them before. Two tight ends in the game now for the Lobos. Montrell Moore at the back. They take the deep hand off to him. Kelly wanted to throw it deep, but he ran out of time. Second sack of the night for Oregon State as Kelly goes down. Kent Bray in on the play back at the 38-yard line. And after the play, some pushing and shoving down the end zone. Rob Stone talked about a lot of the extracurricular stuff, and we see it again well, as you look at the replay. Yeah, Kelly was trying to wait and get the ball deep to counter but he ran out of time, and it was double coverage in the end zone. Yeah, and backside, Rod, there was only one other guy halfway running a route. Yeah. There, were, there, there was one and a half bodies in the secondary running routes. No options for the quarterback. We mentioned the pushing and shoving down by the end zone at the end of that play, and the officials are talking about it. I did not see a flag on the field, nor do we see one now. Well, one of the officials has one in his hand. Well, one of the things that, that both staffs are aware of, especially Oregon State, when it comes to penalties, there's perception, and these officials have to take control right After now. After the play, personal foul on the defense, personal foul on the offense, penalties will cancel. 
Here you see Eric Williams with the coverage, and then Turner comes over and takes a shot, and Counter didn't like any of that. And, and you know what? You have to be honest about that, too, is Turner gave him a shot pretty good, and, and you don't, that's not in the normal uh, ending or conclusion of a play when the, when the guy sees the quarterback's down. Right? <laughs> You don't, you don't see him. Oh, yeah, no, you're right. It's just that, you know, when you get oh, your Tyler shot. Oh, Tyler had walked away. <laughs> Might have been just a penalty against Oregon State. Although that flag didn't come out until after counter. And then with the counter attack. And Turner just got a little bit more, and he, you know, he, gave, him, he gave him something. That wasn't the penalty. It shouldn't have been there. <laughs> Third and 11 and a flag. Looked like Terrence Thomas, the wide receiver at the bottom of your screen, flinched. Prior to the snap, false start on the offense. Five yards, third down. This team has been penalized five times now. It, yes, Turner, that wasn't a cheap shot. I don't want anybody to think that. Right. It just wasn't normal. Yeah. You don't yeah. see that happen all the time at the end of a play. A guy hits the receiver. The quarterback was sacked yeah. 40 yards yeah. away. <laughs> right, right. Third down and 18. I'm glad you clarified that because DBs everywhere will say, yeah, take a shot when you get it as long as it's not dirty. But you're right, that's not a normal ending to a play. Ray came on a blitz. Kelly throws it way too far. Overshot the target, Thomas, by about six or seven yards. And a decision here for Rocky Long, 2.06 to go in the half. Yeah. On the other side of midfield at the 43-yard line, 42-yard line, but he's going to set the fun team on. That's probably smart because, you you know, 31-7, you can go in and regroup at halftime, uh, kick it down there, and try to keep them from scoring again. Fifth punt for Tyler Goss. The sophomore from San Diego. What a walk-on was put on scholarship. And Clayson hit immediately at the 10-yard line. 34-yard punt, one-yard return. Here's Chris Fowler. Well, Sean, coming up on the Dodge half, the report, Trevor Marcus joining me. We'll talk about a potentially highest-scoring game in Hawaii, plus the issue of East Coast bias against West Coast teams and players. Does it exist? Absolutely. Now, only that I reside in the state of Arizona now, but Steven Jackson, 3,000 yards the last two years rushing, he should be a Heisman Trophy candidate. There is no West Coast bias, and if there is, I'll tell you why it's their own fault. Uh, bias against the West Coast, right. right, bud. There is no bias. Uh, yes, there is. I, I know Mr. Gilmore has an opinion that. Zero. We'll get into that coming up on the Dodge <laughs> halftime report. I think there are. Every time I talk to somebody out west doing radio shows, they're all like, man, the East Coast hates us. <laughs> I never have an opinion. Who won the Heisman <laughs> Trophy last year? Jackson runs there out of bounds near the 20-yard line. Well, I, I Garonsky made the tackle. I think you're Who right, Who was the number Sean? one yeah. team in both polls? Yeah, wh whatever bias was there is being chipped away at. We I'm telling you, you go Palmer. for it. Palmer wins. SC's number one in both polls. There you go. I rest my case, Your Honor. Who was that? Mark May, you listened to Sean McDonough. <laughs> <laughs> a little legal advice. This guy's a lawyer. My guy, Trev, man. I'm always right there with my guy, Trev. That's who is, dangerous, by the way, uh, chewing up the dust that I'm leaving the rest of the field in the Sonic. Yes, you are, young man. Jackson Stuff. And how much confidence did you have in your pick tonight? And who did I you don't pick? even remember who I picked in this game. Oh, I did yeah. all the picks before I left uh, home. Oh, and I left okay. the sheet at home. Yeah, well, I don't know who I have in this game. Sounds like he's 28 tonight. games. You know, I can't remember who I picked tonight. I don't know. Game. It sounds like he may have a fictitious partner somewhere. I think he's struggling tonight. I don't know who I have in this game. <laughs> I thought it was going to be a close game, so whichever team I have, I don't think I put a lot of confidence points on it. It is not a close game, however. <laughs> Third down, they blitz off the corner. The pass is dropped. A late flag thrown off the hands of Ewis. Would have been a tough catch. The ball a little bit away from his body. He's got just about everything thrown in his direction. Lobo is indicating it's against Oregon State. And if it is, they'll probably turn it down and force a punt here. Still with time. Pass number 28 during the pass went down and blocked downfield. 28. They should turn this down. It'll be fourth down and pass three. interference on the offense. Penalty is declined. Fourth down. Here's Mike Riley. Isn't it 
interesting how he wound up back at Oregon State considering that he was in the running for jobs at UCLA and Stanford and Indiana and Alabama and somehow missed out on all those things. Mike was very fortunate that the people at Oregon State were open-minded and they listened and they recognized a good quality man, a good family, a smart football coach with a lot more experience now, what much more well-rounded in football. And he's the guy who recruited a lot of the talent that Dennis Erickson used to have those great seasons, including the Fiesta Bowl victory over Notre Dame. They won 31 games in four years with a lot of talent that Riley and his staff recruited. And three and eight and five and six in Mike's two years before he went to San Diego. They were clearly heading in the right direction. The later game on the offense. Five yards, four down. They're not heading in the right direction right now as that penalty will back him up five more. The thing you always hear about Mike Riley is what a nice guy. You know, he has a reputation of really being one of the nicest people in coaching. You know, Which is really, really oh, odd that San Diego didn't allow him to interview for the USC job when they really weren't going to keep him around in the Whoa! The ball pinballs all over the place. Counter, the deep man got run into by one of his teammates. A 40-yard punt. And with the ricochet, the Lobos get it at the 47-yard line. All right, Rod, what's the answer? Oh, wow. Well, all I know is Greg Wright, whatever he wants. He returns some kicks. Can you imagine trying to shut him down as he returns kicks or he splits out as a wide receiver? He's just a great athlete and, and, uh, and smart, too, in terms of football savvy. Oh, man. Receiver, punt, and kick returner, in addition to line the line the and the correct the answer. Burns probably tuning in tonight and not very happy about the way this one's going. Montrell Moore. And a timeout called. Wow. Yeah, they just can't figure out what they want to do on first down. I'm a little surprised by that play call, too. You're now down to one timeout left. You force yourself to have to use one of the timeouts that you had, one of the two, by slamming the ball right in the middle of the line where you've had absolutely no luck tonight. Well, they haven't had much success with anything offensively tonight outside of that one touchdown pass where they ran the post corner. They're a much improved offensive team this year. They averaged 31 points per game, 423 yards of offense. That was second best in the Mountain West. They were 100 yards per game better than they were last year. And they were 102nd in the nation in offense. Still managed to win seven games. Very balanced attack, very well coached offensive group coordinated by Dan Dodd. Dan Dodd had his son, that's the Oregon State Booth and Paul Christ on the left, their offensive player. Dan Dodd, like a lot of the coaches, had his family on the trip, and we met his son, Bobby. Bobby Dodd. Uh, that, we're getting closer to Dan. You know, the, the thing about... There he is on the right. Go the other way, fellas. There he is with the uh, yep. glasses on. Glasses low. Right there. And uh, Bobby Dodd, great coach's name, and we asked Bobby what was his favorite thing that he did in Las Vegas. He said the ESPN zone. Hey, that's a nice place. A good way to get yourself on TV if you're yeah. about eight years old. How old do you think Bobby was? About eight? Uh, probably about nine or ten. Nine or ten? But that is pin zone. Nice. They treat you well over there. Montrell Moore, the running back. They set up the screen, and he is devoured by Trent Bray. We've seen this New Mexico team in person once and a couple other times on tape, and they're a good-looking offense. Scored a lot of points this year, as we just said, and this has been a disaster. Well, this team is awfully fast defensively, Oregon State is, and I think second half, they've got to come up with some kind of counter misdirection play. And Amir continues. They blitz and get Kelly. Bill Swancutt with the sack. He's their all-time leader in sacks and has his 25th of his career. And that's the end of the first half.
fitting conclusion to the half as the Oregon State defense stuffed the Lobos virtually throughout. Here's Rob Stone. Well, Coach, disappointing first half. First thing you say to your men in the locker room. Well, I don't know. we got to make some adjustments. We're playing like a very poor football team, and we look like a team that hadn't played in over a month, and, and we're making mistakes on both sides of the ball. We can't run it on offense, and obviously we're not stopping the pass worth of darn on defense, so we're in a lot of trouble. And we'll come back out the second half and play hard. First down has been a problem for your offense. How do you rectify that? Well, we're a team that likes to run the ball, and we're not running it very well, and, and that means we're we're not blocking very well up front. And We got confidence in our offensive linemen. Hopefully, they'll catch up to the speed of the game. But again, I mean, it looks like we haven't played in a month, and it looks like they played two weeks ago. Coach, thanks for your time. Appreciate yeah, thank it. You. Halftime here in Las Vegas. The score, Oregon State, 31 to New Mexico, 7. Let's head back to the studio now. It's the Dodge Halftime Report. Here's Chris. All right, folks, thank you. Yeah, welcome to our Dodge Halftime Report. Trev Alberts and Mark May alongside. First down, second down, third down. All downs have been a problem for Rocky Lung, and you feel for him. This is a showcase national TV game for a program that hasn't beaten a Pac-10 team in a long time, and they got, they got the one first down, and they're down by 24. And, and Oregon State proving there is no rule against playing defense in a bowl game. They well, listened. Playing nice defense. Yeah. I think what you're seeing in this game is just typically all overall talent that Oregon State has over New Mexico. Too much speed from the outside. The offense and defensive lines just dominating the line of scrimmage. Flat out, they have the better athletes. That's why they're winning. But Chris mentioned it. This was the type of game that New Mexico had to come out, make a statement to the nation. We talk all these times teams don't get the proper respect. This was their chance, certainly not earning that respect this not tonight against Oregon State. Mark. And I predicted before the game started that Steven Jackson would have 100 yards <laughs> rushing. Well, he's only got 82, Bold. but he has, he wow, has 46 receiving, so he's over 120 yards total offense, three touchdowns. But Way to go. What I'm impressed by Steven Jackson is not only his size. I block for some big running backs, John Riggins, George Rogers. I still have the knots on the, my back to prove it. But what Steven Jackson gives you is that ability to pound the football, first down, second down. Those two and three yard runs in the first quarter are now five and six and seven yard runs. In the third quarter, they'll become six and eight and ten yard runs. And what he gives you, not only the ability to run the ball and run the defender over, he's got tremendous hands for a big man. You don't see running backs that are 6'3", 230 pounds that can catch the ball as well as he can. And no question about inspiration for him in the first half. Being there in his hometown, he wants to go out with a bang. Besides Jackson, I think the star performer in the first half was Joe Easy Ryder, the referee. It's yeah. tremendous. We, we hope for a lot of flags in the second half. Brian Doyle Murray from Caddyshack. Caddyshack. Is a, you know, those guys were comparing him to Nick Nolte. I think Brian Doyle Murray's a good call. We're coming back to the Dodge Halftime Report. East Coast bias against the West doesn't exist. We'll kick that around, among other topics. Halftime Report, brought to you by Dodge. You can take life as it comes, or you can grab life by the horns. Dodge. When do you guys find out what's in those gifts? I, I, I'm guessing not much. <laughs> those are called props. Maybe Air. you can open them tomorrow night when Reese comes in there, huh? It's the coal he's looking for you welcome, give out. Welcome to our Dodge Halftime Report. Impressive first half. Morgan State, they are all over the Lobos of New Mexico. We begin to look ahead at Capital One Bowl Week. Head to the islands of Hawaii. Tomorrow is the Rainbow Warriors in their home field against Houston in the Sheraton Hawaii Bowl. Day after that, Josh Harris from Bowling Green try to smack around a Big Ten team. The Inside Bowl, the final college appearance for Kevin Jones of Virginia Tech and Cal without, apparently, Jeff MacArthur, their top receiver. More on that coming up later. And Larry Fitzgerald in Pittsburgh against Matt Schaub in Virginia in the Continental Tire Bowl on December 27th. All right, let's look at it tomorrow night's game. And after you open the gifts, you get to enjoy Houston and Hawaii and what many people believe is going to be the highest scoring bowl game of the entire season. Well, a lot of it has to do with June Jones's offense. It's the run and shoot offense, and they will throw the ball early and often in this football game. But head coach June Jones for Hawaii has the luxury of not one, but two quarterbacks. The first one, Timmy Chang, has thrown for over 12 thousand passing yards in his career and he can make every throw from the pocket rolling out of the pocket going deep with the football and if he can't get the job done june jones goes to the other hot hand at the quarterback position for hawaii jason will and right here he can make every throw also the same type of quarterback can move out of the pocket make all the throws that's why hawaii can put a lot of points on the board they're not going to run it a lot but they will definitely throw it a lot you mentioned quarterbacks. Houston, Mark, happens to have a pretty good quarterback itself. A true freshman, the Conference USA Player of the Year, Kevin Cobb, completed 61% of his passes, 2,800 yards passing. Here he is right here, the young man. I really think, you know, that Houston has a great chance of winning this game because they can do this. They like to spread you out, and they have a nice pass game. 
with a young quarterback, but they also, Mark, are two-dimensional. They actually can run the football, too. They have a young man named Anthony Evans, who's had about 1,000 yards rushing. In his last game, 32 carries, 165 yards, and three touchdowns. Yes, it was against UAB. But again, this Hawaii team, Mark, I really believe you have to be two-dimensional. You mentioned the passing game of Hawaii. They have to be two-dimensional, run the football, and then Kevin Cobb not turn the football over. I think they have a shot of winning this game. Well, they need to run the ball for another very good reason. They better keep their own defense off the field. I mean, you look at the defensive stats in Houston. They're down there in the 90s and the 100s. That's obviously a low for anybody, but especially for a bowl team. They gave up 62 to TCU, 66 to Louisville. I'm just trying to be nice in the holiday season. No, I think mean, it's going to be a good, entertaining game. Enjoy that. I may even tune in. We talked about the quarterback <laughs> performances of this Capital One Bowl Week, and these guys in their final college appearance, Roethlisberger, the junior who, in the worst kept secret in college football, is coming out. But look what he did, what Rivers did, setting a Mazda Tangerine Bowl record with the five touchdowns against Kansas. Dinwiddie from Boise State last night against a pretty good TCU defense. These guys all going out in style. And big numbers, as we just saw by those guys. But I think we're just scratching the tip of the iceberg. We still have B.J. Simmons coming up from Texas Tech, Matt Schaub from Virginia. We're going to see a lot more explosion on offense. But the way I like it is these quarterbacks, they went out in style. They had a lot of fun. They went out there and they threw the ball around. And that's what I liked about it. They enjoyed their last game as a collegiate quarterback. Of course you liked it because you're an offensive yeah, player. And you like it when the offense scores. But I think it's interesting is these offenses, obviously with two and three weeks to prepare, have went out and came up with some new schemes. They've executed on offense. The four teams that have won their bowl games have averaged 455 yards of total offense. Look tonight, the game you're watching, Oregon State, they're on pace for about 7,000 in one game. So I think that's the key. Is seeing this trend happen in this whole bowl season, it's okay defensively to step up and play defense. I know it's a nice reward for a nice season, but it's all right to go ahead and wrap somebody up and drive yeah, your legs. Yeah, but they, you, those guys all had weeks to prepare. And you, you're right. They really play with emotion. They, they were uh, enjoying their last time suiting up a college game, and it definitely showed. We'll talk more college football in a second. As a reminder, NBA on Christmas Day. ESPN's got the Cavaliers and LeBron against the Orlando Magic at 2.30 Eastern time. A couple of games on ABC at night. It all builds towards the Rockets and the Lakers in prime time. We'll come back. East Coast versus West Coast. Take up that issue. 31-7 Beavers all over the Lobos in Las Vegas. And very likely his last college game as we continue with the Dodge halftime report. Steven Jackson of Oregon State comes back to his hometown, bouncing off the Mexico defenders, shows the versatility, collecting the pass, scoring touchdowns, and leading his team to a big halftime lead. Next stop, the National Football League. But maybe you don't know a lot about Steven Jackson if you don't live in the West Coast. And that's part of the syndrome we're going to debate right now, the East Coast bias against the West Coast. It's a big issue. You could take this thing back decades. There are some pros and some cons as far as this year's evidence. If you believe in the bias, you can say that, once again, the Pac-10 team, in this case USC, a couple of years ago was Oregon, gets screwed out of a chance to go to the BCS title game because of the computer formulas. Carson Palmer ended a long drought of Pac-10 Heisman winners. You could throw Detmer in the mix on the West Coast. No bias. Some of the things they brought up in the booth in Vegas. USC is number one in the polls. Currently, you can see the Pac-10 not exactly representing in the top 25. So, that, bias, no bias. There is no bias. That's my point. <laughs> Sean McDonough said it. USC's number one in both polls. Well, so, what, is thing. the BCS biased? Yes. I mean, the BCS can't. They're number one in both human polls, the writers and the coaches poll. The computer the first formulas time in are 20 biased. Years. I mean, you, you yeah. can't make up for the last two decades where you've had a Pac-10 team that was ranked in the top two or a chance to play for the national champion or a Heisman Trophy winner, the first one in 20 the years. Pac-10 wasn't very good at some point. You know what? Pete Carroll comes in, they play some defense, they finally have a good team. They had some pretty good offenses out there in the Pac-10. Well, yeah, they have good offenses, but they'd run into a team from the SEC or the Big 12 or the Big 10 who had defenses that could stop that offense. That's the whole point. It's a simple thing with it. when you t talk about exposure. I'll tell you, a lot of people outside the West don't watch West yes. Coast teams or players play. I've talked to very knowledgeable AP pollsters this year who had maybe seen USC play once or twice, yet they're voting on whether that team is deserving one, two, or three. You don't see West Coast players make All-American teams or win the individual awards nearly as much as they should, I don't think. I agree with you. You're absolutely right. But the point is, it's not always our fault. It's their fault, too. Why do they insist on having their games start at 7 or 8 o'clock? If you really want to have that exposure, go ahead and start your games at noon on the West Coast. They then can show you on our highlight shows. We'd love to show you on all of our highlight shows. Many times, we do the midnight show, Mark. 
you know, it's halftime or it's second quarter of a big game in the Pac-10. The point is start the games early. They're not getting the exposure that they deserve. Well, it's not our fault that most of the voters in the AP and most of the voters oh. that vote for the big awards are 50 years old and older and they're asleep by the time oh. these games are over. Oh, okay. I mean, it's not our fault that happens, but seriously, when you look at the West Coast and the East Coast, they have just as many good players, and I think the draft really proves that, the NFL draft, because when players are eligible for the NFL draft, you see just as many players from the West Coast drafted as the East Coast. I'm not sure it's going to change, but I think you're right. I think USC, and particularly the kind of defense they're playing, beginning to change yes. things a little bit. I mean, I don't think people around the country recognize how good USC is, but yes. still there are individuals on that team that maybe did not get some of the postseason recognition they could have. I think if they had played the Big Ten team, or an SEC team just as dominant as USC was, I mean, 40 points a game out there, they would have got more recognition. And you know what else helps them? If you're Pete Carroll and you took your football team, you went to Auburn, first game of the season, you beat Auburn on their home field, on national TV, that's the point. That's the exposure they need. Go over to the East Coast, beat those guys. Slap them in the face. You'll get the exposure you need. Well, they slapped Iowa around in a bowl game last year. Yes, they did. Let's see. We'll see what happens when the bowl season comes around. And, uh, they might they win the cup. The bowl challenge cup, they might win it. Well, they're up to a start here. They did absorb an early loss, but Oregon State taking care of business, representing for the Pac-10 against Mexico. 31-7 is the halftime score. News on a Cal player's key injury coming up. It's halftime report brought to you by Dodge. You can take life as it comes, or you can grab life by the horn. Dodge. Big blow for the Cal Bears as they get ready to play Friday night in the uh, Insight.com Bowl against Virginia Tech. Jeff MacArthur, second only to Larry Fitzgerald in receiving yards per game this season, will apparently miss the game. He fractured an arm in practice. It doesn't look good for MacArthur. He's replaced by a guy, Chase Lyman, who caught seven balls all year. That's what MacArthur averages in one game, so a major loss for Cal in their passing attack. Now, we take a look at the Sonic Bowl Mania Challenge. It's the in-house office pool. Sean McDonough among the ESPN announcers has the lead here over Trev Alberts, but not looking good tonight. I think Sean is in New Mexico tonight, right? Yeah, hard-charging Trev Alberts. I get, I'm going to gain on him. Yeah, this thing is so evenly matched in there because you look at the points for Mania. That's the key thing. And you can still go online on ESPN.com and register. You will have cost yourself a total of 15 points by getting in late, but again, I mean, hundreds of points are going to win this thing, so it's still not too late. More than 200,000 people are participating. I think Rod Gilmore is out of it. Is he? I, He's effectively eliminated. You, you've mathematically eliminated him. <laughs> four know. and a half. Games I don't. I don't see him thing. on any list. That's my problem. I, is he playing? I don't know if he's playing. I'm not playing. <laughs> Derek Anderson, up top, touchdown, 31-7 to Mexico State. Second half coming up soon. Seven total dominance, fellas, by the Beavers there in the first half. Yeah, really, <laughs> every way you look at it, and then think about the second half, if you're in New Mexico defensively, I think that they've got to get away from man coverage. They've got to get another guy to help them in the running game, and so I think they're going to have to bring pressure, play more zone behind it. That's mm -hmm. the only way to handle Stephen Jackson. They have enough bodies up there. And on offense, New Mexico has to spread out. They've got to go get everybody out of the backfield. They have to get Oregon State's defense from sideline to sideline because they're all bunched up in there, and they can't deal with the physical speed and quickness of Oregon State's front seven. It's going to be hard for them to do, though, because it's a little bit out of character, as Rocky Long said. I think the disappointment for New Mexico is the play of the offensive line. They think it's one of the best, maybe the best in school history. They've played well all year, three all-conference performers, but they're really getting manhandled up front. There's no time for Kelly when he tries to pass, and there are no holes for Don Felmore to run through. Obviously, they have, what, minus eight yards rushing offensively for New Mexico, and Moore's been stymied. Kirk Illinimi kicks off, and Dwight Counter is not able to run it back. 
Let's check in with Rob Stone. Just spoke with Mike Riley. Yeah, he was a little pleased coming out of the locker room. Told me probably the best first half they've had all season. Things for them to watch out for defensively. Telling the guys, we cannot give up a big play and be aware of trickery. They know that this New Mexico team has some trick plays in their book. Thrilled with the work of Derek Anderson, the quarterback. Handled all the blitzes really, really well. Offense, just continue to run. Things will be fine. First bowl appearance for Mike Riley. The son of a coach. His dad, Bud, coached for 37 years, including a 10-year stint as an assistant at Oregon State. Mike Riley grew up in Corvallis. The home of the University of Oregon State University. Lawrence Turner made the tackle on Dontrell Moore. Coach Riley Sr. now retired up in British Columbia. And some experience coaching in Canada, as has Mike Riley. Mike won two Grey Cups coaching the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. I thought every team in that league was the Rough Riders, though. <laughs> <laughs> They're riding something. <laughs> Second and six. Next with 35 yards of offense in the first half. And that pass is incomplete. Brian Penley, the tight end, couldn't hang on. Couldn't stay on his feet, nor could he catch it. And that's, that's the play that Oregon State is expecting. It went for a touchdown the post corner earlier in the game. You run a little play action to one side, and you get a tight end that's dragging underneath, going back opposite the grain. And they're looking for that single receiver over there. Well, part of the problem is that Oregon State is starting to get that swagger now. I mean, they've had a great first half. They're feeling like they have the, a real good check on this offense. They know they're faster and quicker. They're starting to strut around out there. And that was the play to call. Second and six. Sean, I haven't heard you say that very often. It's usually second and ten. Mm -hmm. Second and nine. Second and twelve. They're third and six now. Moore shifted. Here comes Terrence Thomas on the end of round again, and they're ready for him. Again, just too much speed. The ball comes out, but they're going to rule him down by contact at the 22-yard line. Jonathan Pollard picked it up and ran with it. Richard Siegler leading the pursuit of Thomas. Yeah, we talk about speed. Keep your eyes on the flow. Watch how they run past blockers to the right side. 51 Siegler will show up, running by blockers. And these guys, this offensive line, can't get in front to hit these guys. They're too quick and too fast. They just and, get right by them. And they're the zone type of scheme where body position is critical Only, to their success. On the offense, penalty is declined, fourth down. <laughs> There's my man, referee Joe Ryder. Looks like he went in and had him a bottle of water and got that voice going again. <laughs> Boy, that dude is, he's ready. Yeah, Chris Fowler and the guys back in the studio gave the Caddyshack reference. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Nick Nolte, no. Caddyshack. Caddyshack, okay. Yeah. It's something. Which guy in Caddyshack? I don't know. I just heard the end of it. <laughs> I heard Trev. He's awfully cocky about this Sonic Bowl challenge. You got to be humble. Lay low in the weeds and I just sneak to the end. Lead. I think you know, if this were a fight, it would be stopped. Bad punt this time by Goss. Clayson couldn't come up fast enough to field it. Goss did get some roll down to the 41-yard line. A 37-yard punt. We look at the ESPN game track. If you missed it, where were you? Steven Jackson has been all that in the first half. Two touchdowns rushing, one receiving, and boy, he has a lot of time. And Derek Anderson has made some excellent throws, both underneath and, underneath and long. He's passed for 223. Jackson has rushed for 80. Jackson also with 46 yards receiving, including a 34-yard touchdown reception. The first touchdown of the game. Good field position for the Beavers on offense for the first time in the second half. The blitz is picked up. Anderson going deep and a flag down. He was looking for Mike Pass, who got tangled up with the defender. Brandon Payne had the coverage on half. And Payne did the right thing there. He, he was beaten on the old out and up, and he just grabbed the receiver. And that's preferable to giving up the touchdown. Come on, Joe. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> like he was stuck there for a moment. Thought our screen froze, but it was actually Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Pass interference on the defense. 
Spot foul, first down. Well, here's Haas. You'll see pain. Bite on this. That's more of a hold to me than the pass interference because the ball wasn't in the air when he really redirected him. Well, this defense has had its uh, struggles tonight. They had played so well coming in over the last five games. They had given up an average of just 250 yards per game. Tonight, they gave up 308 in the first half. All across midfield now, play action big. Anderson Greedy, Newsom is open, and it's just a little bit too long. He beat Gabriel Fulbright, who had the coverage, where the throw was about three yards out of the reach of James Newsom. And we talked about zone coverage and getting an extra guy in the box there, pressure to handle Jackson. Well, they're getting the extra guy in, but they're playing man. <laughs> you know Eric Anderson's not, going after it. I've had a chance this year to see and call three or four different teams that run this 3-3-5 defense. My impression has always been about it that it's soft up front until they bring a lot of support with safeties right. to stop the running game. Mm -hmm. And they're all vulnerable to the passing game. Mm -hmm. and certainly the absence of Renteria has hurt New Mexico in the defensive front here tonight. One of their best players is Jackson breaking more tackles and showing that speed. Chopped down inside the 15-yard line. Gabriel Fulbright prevented the touchdown. They'll mark him out at the 14. It's a gain of 34 for number 34. Uh, you know what, you talk about the vision, and, and they're trying to get to his legs, but the speed to get away from the blockers. Right, I'm telling you, the guy's pretty dark going strong and fast and quicker, and there's that cut that I was waiting for. And how about that change of direction, just the ability to slide out to the right side to the open space that he was feeling and could see with his vision. That, this kid's special. Oh, kid, he's a young man. He's a big young man. He's a big young man. His ninth 100-yard game of the season. Tying the school record he set last year. It's his 19th career 100-yard game. He takes the handoff again. Bounces off a couple of more tacklers. Oh, and is near another first down. Although they say he stepped out at the six-yard line about two yards short. Well, we saw the vision. We saw the quickness. A little bit of footwork there, but the power. Oh, man. The power he has, that combination of speed, quick feet, and power, you just don't find in many running backs. If you ta try to tackle just about anybody around the shoulders like that, it's going to be pretty tough. Well, and the way he plays with his shoulder pads, staying level and getting lower than the tackler, it discourages you from trying to go low, and then all of a sudden you cheat and you try to go high, and there's no shot at him. They get it to Jackson again, the bounce outside, then the... Uh, Lowering of the shoulder to get into the end zone for another touchdown is fourth of the night. Third rushing touchdown for the junior from Las Vegas. And the lead 37-7 for the Beavers. Does the term smell in the end zone mean anything to this guy? Mm. At the three-yard line, he could he could smell it. It's almost like he slowed down just a fraction because he wanted to welcome that contact. Let me lower challenge. my shoulder yeah, and run me, you over. Let me get this guy over here so I have something to challenge him. I think it was a bad idea to taunt him at the uh, big contest the other yeah. night. I'd have given him my stake. The extra point up and good by Illinibi. Well, the second half begins just as the first half went with Oregon State in command. touchdowns tonight for Steven Jackson three on the ground one receiving he's run for 128 and caught three passes for 46 yards a six yard run capping the latest Oregon State drive of 59 yards on just four plays he told us that this game might affect his decision about whether or not to stay in school or go to the NFL if that's the case I think 
it's another step toward the NFL for him tonight. Which NFL team needs an every down back and has a high pick? Into the end zone it goes for Dave Fulbright. Why not run it out when you're down by 31? He did not reach the 20, stopped at the 15. And it was just about all Steven Jackson on this last round. Well, you got to see so much of his ability, the speed, the quickness, and the power. He showed you a little bit of everything on this drive. I thought the patience, too. The, the patience, the acceleration once the block was made. He didn't outrun guards pulling. Uh, he really has shown a lot. He, he caught a screen for touchdown earlier. Very good student coming out of high school with a 3.8 GPA. He's about a 3.0 student at... Oregon State right now. He said someday he'd like to design houses and then have his mother sell them. His mom, Brenda, a real estate agent. Yeah. Dontrell Moore. It's been that way all night long for Dontrell. Just cannot find any running room. Hey, Sean, yesterday you're talking about he is a smart kid, obviously. Yesterday we were having this luncheon and had a chance to go up. I was speaking to some kids doing some deals. And I asked. You did a nice job. Don't be modest. Well, you were a fine MC of the bank. Well, anyway, so I asked Oregon State, who three guys up there, and Stephen was one of them. I go, how many states are there, guys? It's kind of like Jay Leno walking deal. And he goes, 51. And his other two partners go, Sickle goes, 50, man. Are you kidding me? <laughs> and then he's adding the District of Columbia, Puerto Rico. <laughs> He's a good, good guy. Great spirit. Casey Kelly out to the 20. Richard Siglu made the tackle. Well, the party's already begun over there, hasn't it? Well, I think what you, you're seeing here, really, when you're talking about big picture, is the Pac-10 is a stronger conference than the Mountain West, no hands question. down. And there's no knock on New Mexico. This is a good football team, but there's a different level of football. And, and for those people out there who say non-BCS is getting cheated, well, you're getting a great shot right now of a mid-level Pac-10 team whipping up on a pretty gar darn good Mountain West team. Mm -hmm. well, examples, of course, of Mountain West team beating Pac-10 teams. Sure. Utah had a nice win over Cal this year. Swan cut with another sack. The third of the night for Oregon State. Second for Swancutt, 24 for his career, adding to his school record total. Yeah, hey, Sean, there's no doubt these teams can compete on any given Saturday with somebody from the Big Ten, SEC, etc. But to do it week in and week out, they don't have the depth mm -hmm. and the overall skills to deal with that. Well, you also have had four weeks to actually look at your opponent and do the matchups and the like, and you can see the discrepancy when coaches really have that time as opposed to when someone shows up on Sneak a Sneak up with you, 3-3-5, three, yeah. Three, yeah. 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 That Stanford coming out in there. <laughs> Bradley Goss punting from the end zone. They need to hurry to snap it here. Didn't get it off. Well, they're running out of other things that can go wrong now. And Trying to snap, delay of game on the offense. <laughs> Sorry, Five Joe. yards, fourth down. Forgive me, Joe. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> is, is Rocky Long, he came into the meeting and he said, you know, you know, talking about the perception of New Mexico. New Mexico is a good football team, period. A good coaching staff. And they turned the corner. I said, you know what, Rocky, when I talk to guys around the country, fans look at New Mexico and think about New Mexico as a good program, not a bad program. Very good team. Back-to-back -back bowl seasons. Bit of a low snap. Nice punt by Goss. Drives Clayson back to his 40 where he mucked it for a moment. And then gets out to the 47 yard line. 52 yard punt by Goss and a six yard return and a timeout in Las Vegas. ESPN's exclusive presentation of the 2003 Las Vegas Bowl. Brought to you by Capital One, What's in Your Wallet, and by Corvell California Champagne, making moments into memories. And that's what Oregon State is doing tonight, making this moment into a great memory. And that pass just off the hands of Mike Hass. Inside the 15-yard line, very nearly another big play for Derek Anderson and the Beavers. 
Already leading 38 to 7. They're going for the jugular. Well, that's that Pac-10 versus Mountain West mentality. You know, they said there would be a little pride on the line here, and there was some serious smack talking during the week between these two teams. So, you know what? If you're going to dance uh, and talk about it, you got to be ready to... Yep. If you're going to talk, you better back it up or else you're going to get smacked down. There was rush five again. Steven Jackson. These guys look like they're a little tired of tackling him. And he goes out of bounds at the 49. Well, let's take a look at the Sonic Bowl Media Challenge standings among our ESPN announced crew. Fifteen of our football broadcasters are participating in the contest. I won't uh, be modest and call attention to the top of the standing and the enormous lead. But uh, look at the bottom. Rob Stone. He has eight points. Eight points in four games. All right, but with 10% of the uh, 10 of the games in, we're forecasting you as the winner already, Sean, right? And Rob is the loser. You know, I got my ballot in. I never got it in, all right? So I'm not there. I need to help Rob out. You know what happened. It's not like SMU. We had other people to fill out the form for you. <laughs> Here you actually had to do it yourself. <laughs> I'm just killing you. <laughs> you know, maybe you could have Maryland or the kids fill it out for you, but you know, in order to actually be in the contest, you had to fill out the sheet and send it in. I had those dudes just kind of punch. I didn't have to think about it. I mean, you know. Hey, but we're not very far into this thing. I mean, it's only four games. I, mean, I just want to ask Rob over. Stone, do you understand, like, the concept, the way this thing works, your Colgate education? No, I, I got it. I'm number 15 on the list, but I'm number one in their hearts, and there's a good reason why I'm in the bottom. You picked the fewest winners. <laughs> well, <laughs> but, but, the, winner, the reason that comes to mind. There's a couple reasons I'm in the bottom. Number one, I did it after a holiday party. Um, <laughs> oh, okay, thanks, Joe. Number, number two, I'm kicking tail in the Sonic Soccer Challenge. And third, I didn't. I, I have so much faith in my picks. I didn't do that whole uh, allotting points to games. So what I've done actually is I've earned eight out of a possible ten points, according to the way I, I kind of picked my game. You just picked the winners without doing the points. Exactly. So you're going to have the 28th game feel, will be your 28-point pick. Uh, it's not how you start, it's how you finish. Well, you can't even start. you got to get started. E easy, Cody. You're not even on the list. Yeah, I know. That's why I can throw darts <laughs> at you. I can't, can't lose. You over there. I can't on. lose. Colgate, man, I'll tell you what, you couldn't have made it in our locker room. <laughs> and, and I'm man enough to put my name down there, and I'm proud of my eight points. Proud! <laughs> Rob did win the soccer when he had the quakes. Was it the quakes, Rob? Rob, one of the foremost soccer announcers in America. Sean, we're coming after you. I think I'm going to pick up a lot of points tonight. I have a lot of confidence in this program. I didn't realize that I had New Mexico. Maybe I was at a holiday party, too. <laughs> Second and 12. They're back at the six-yard line. See if they can't spread them out a little bit here. They do go with three wide receivers as Kelly rolls back into the end zone. And then a narrow throw in the direction of counter. Really unfortunate for New Mexico because they've had an excellent season with some quality wins. But one of their few appearances on national TV, that's been one of the frustrations for Coach Long in recent years. Even as they've gotten better, not much exposure on national television. And here they're getting it tonight. And playing about as poorly as they've played perhaps in several years. Well, things have picked up for the program. Their recruiting has picked up, and Rocky Long, last time we talked to him about it, he said there was a time when he would recruit guys, and they'd ask if they needed a passport to get to New Mexico. <laughs> Doesn't happen anymore. <laughs> well, somebody asked me once if you had to take a bridge to get to Rhode Island, so I guess that helps. <laughs> I think I played with that guy. Kelly zings one deep. Counter was open and the ball was short. Well, there is tremendous excitement in the state of New Mexico now. They had a record-setting year in attendance at home at University Stadium. Average better than 35,000 fans per game. The interest in the uh, football program really at an all-time high, thanks largely to this man, who is going to get a contract extension. We were speaking with Rudy Davalos, the athletic director at halftime. He said, oh, absolutely. He has earned it with what he has done. Tough night here at the Las Vegas Bowl, however, for the Lobos. Nine minutes to play in the third quarter. 
And Oregon State leads 38 to 7 as Goss punts from the eighth time tonight. It seems that each one is a little bit closer to the end line. Clayson muffs it. Boy, the Lobos had a great shot at it originally. I don't know if they got it. They're saying that they do, and they did at the 42 yard line. 39 yard punt. And Clayson had a tough time fielding it as he came running up. Two of the things that have haunted Oregon State all season have been turnovers and defensive penalties. And, and trying to put together a complete game. Uh, you know, and this is one of those situations where you, you know, maybe, Rod, you come up and you just fair catch the football. Yeah, but you get caught up in the fact that everybody's making plays out there, and you want to make a play also. And that time, Cole Clawson just decided he was going to try to make a play. and He made handle. a play. He made a play. <laughs> Wrong play. Yeah. And the Tony Frazier recovered the fumble for New Mexico. First and ten, Lobo. Look out. Kelly upended. Juan Edwards. For his second team, all packed ten with the fourth sack of the night. He's on his way to play in the East-West Shrine game. And... We talked with Mark Banker, their outstanding defensive coordinator. He thinks Edwards has a bright future in the NFL. Thinks he's a first-round pick, and considering his quickness and his size, he goes at about 300 pounds, can play inside, but also quick enough to play outside on the edge. So he'll be a versatile guy that people will look at in the NFL draft. From Columbus, Montana, was class president three years in a row when he was in high school. So that for him, the size of him. Pass caught along the near sideline by Mike Augustiniak, the tight end. He's chopped down at the 42. He's chopped down 20 players in their last game uh, against Wyoming. They had a rousing win in a snowstorm up in Laramie in the regular season finale to clinch second place in the Mountain West. 20 knockdown blocks for Augustiniak in that game against the Cowboys up in Laramie. What an ordeal they had to get to that game. They couldn't land in Laramie, got diverted to Denver, hung around the airport there for a while, then had a bus up there. Didn't get there until the wee hours of the morning. All their meals and routine was ruined, and then they played the next day in nine degree temperatures, the wind chill minus five in a blizzard and beat a good Wyoming team 26 to 3. Exactly. That's not an easy place to play. Remember Colorado State went up there before playing New Mexico and Wyoming put a beating on them much to the surprise of the Colorado State Rams. Mountain West was crazy this year. Had a chance to call a couple of their games. I thought Colorado State was was going to be with Bradley Van Pelt was really going to rock along and play well and they were the preseason yeah. favorite and had an unusually disappointing season. Usually they overachieved. Utah really emerged under Urban Meyer. Low snap. And after the muff a moment ago by Clayson, this time it is Eric Williams back there to field it at the 24. 35-yard punt midway through the third quarter. Oregon State leads 38-7. Vince Young and Cedric Benson lead the high-powered Longhorn attack against Washington State. The Pacific Life Holiday Bowl, Washington State, Texas, Tuesday at 8. It's all part of Capital One Bowl Week on ESPN. So how you doing on the East Coast? Steven Jackson, Oregon State running back. You think you've seen a lot of me now? Stay tuned. You'll see a lot more. have seen a lot of Steven Jackson tonight 21 carries adding to his school record he had had 322 for the year prior to tonight's game 133 yards rushing for Jackson and 46 yards receiving three wide receivers Jackson alone back he squirts through a hole and goes to the 27 yard line tackled by Billy Struther you think Steven Jackson believes the East Coast doesn't see enough of him? You saw that little fight where he referenced the East Coast people taking a look at him tonight. I think there'd be less of concern of an East Coast bias if Pac-10 played more on ESPN. 
Well, that may happen in the future. You never know. We got a little programming over there? Okay. Pick mm -hmm. hitter to Newsom. Nice spin move, and then he went for 10 more before he was finally pulled down by Josh Bazinet. A backup safety, former walk-on now on scholarship. An 18-yard gain on the completion to the senior from Stockton, California. Houston third in the nation this year in receiving yards per game at 113. Only Larry Fitzgerald of Pittsburgh and Cal's Jeff MacArthur. Average more yards per game receiving. Houston is 57 yards receiving tonight on three catches. Jackson, this time tied up on a nice defensive play at the line of scrimmage by Zach Rupp. That little counter off the zone action is something that New Mexico knew that Jackson would run a lot of. They just haven't been able to stop it. They know he really likes that play but they have not been able to get into his hip pocket and stay back there yeah. and bring him down. Yeah, we've seen Oregon State get in the hip pocket of the pulling guards and, and shut down the cutback or even the outside play. So Jackson's strength has really, I think, surprised New Mexico. They, they expected a good football player, the best runner they've faced this year, and I believe he's better than they thought he'd be. Anderson zings one. What a night Derek Anderson has had, and it's Tim Lewis again. For this sixth catch of the night. Into New Mexico territory. They'll mark the ball at the 37-yard line. You know, this kind of a night could be a springboard for Derek Anderson next season. When you think about the fact that he has gone through two systems with Dennis Erickson and Mike Riley, it took him time to really learn each system. It's a new language. And this kind of a night, and then the offseason, could really set him up to have a great senior season. Had some big games this year. We mentioned the 485 against USC. Threw for 408 against Boise State. They handed Boise State its only loss of the year. Did the Beavers. 26-4 win in Corvallis in September. I thought Oregon State would have a better season than they did statistically, or at least win losses because of Derek Anderson. He has big play capabilities, and with Steven Jackson in the backfield, I thought they'd win more games this year. I think what we've seen tonight is that he hasn't forced the ball, and for me, seeing him recognize blitzes and get the right protection better than he did even against USC just a few weeks ago tells me an awful lot about him. He's grown a lot since that ball game. When we talked to Steven Jackson, he mentioned they had more talent. Newsom wants to throw. And it is almost intercepted. Intended for Haas and broken up by Brandon Ratcliffe. Okay, so we got a little re reverse. Pass is taking place now, Rod, and uh, this is a very hard deal. I like it whenever you're trying to hand off on a reverse. Just go ahead and pitch it up in the air like a little toss because a handoff on a reverse is extremely difficult to pull off. But shows, shows it's because of the, the receiver is coming too fast. Oh, yeah. yeah. It, it's hard. Very, very difficult. Sean, the perception was it. that uh, Oregon State, I think their players believe that they had more talent than a seven-win season. You know, they really didn't beat anybody that you say, wow, that was a great win, and they lost a few games along the way that I think they really felt they should have won. When you're first in the league in offense and defense, but only seven and five overall, and four and four in the Pac-10, you're getting killed by the penalties and turnovers, which they've avoided largely here tonight. Well, I think the disappointing stretch for Oregon State was when they lost to Washington and Washington State back-to-back. -back. At that time, they only had one loss, but they were starting to get some attention. They were ranked. People were talking about Steven Jackson for the Heisman Trophy, and I don't think they handled that success very well those weeks back-to-back. -back. Well, they started 5-1, and one, but then uh, ended poorly. Lost those two back-to-back, -back, as you mentioned, to Washington. Washington State beat Arizona and Stanford, then finished here by losing at Oregon in the Civil War game and at USC. They only had over 500 yards of offense against USC. Jackson was open. Anderson missed him. What a likable young guy Anderson is. I spoke with him a couple of days ago. Really a colorful character. He was telling us about his summer job, sweeping the range, Got a golf course, picking up all the balls, driving a little cart. 
told us he put a little apron on so he didn't get his pants dirty and the uh, apron got stuck in the cart in his first day on the job he wound up almost destroying the uh, motor in the little cart that he was driving around friends used to like to go up to the range and try to pelt him with golf balls well in the flat it goes to jackson he's pulled down on a nice play by mike mahorek a backup linebacker sophomore from albuquerque this is a great tackle, one of the few one-on-one -on -one tackles we've seen on Steven Jackson. Usually that stiff arm that he uses will push the defender away. That was a really nice job. You know, he, he, he grabbed cloth, didn't he? It, you've done games with Spillman, he'd go crazy, uh, you know, grab cloth, man. Bring him down. <laughs> Mahorek, a walk-on, usually a special teams player for New Mexico. They say Lewis, the defensive coordinator at New Mexico, said he went up to Corvallis to be with friends over the summer and played golf. And Anderson was right behind him, and he said he kept hitting the ball into Lewis's group because he hit the ball so far off the tee. I could imagine that at 6'6". Six, six. Said he's about a 10 handicap. Back in a moment. Airport? Well, my name is Jim. I love the smell of your limo, Jim. Oh, yeah, well, it's a new car. I love that new car. Yeah, I wish it was mine. It's oh, so good, Jim. It's leather. <laughs> Here we are. I'm going to put the polo match in two, okay? Yes. I know. I know. One-sided game, and on this big night for Oregon State, a big night for Derek Anderson. He's gone over 4,000 yards passing for the season. The only other quarterback to do that in Pac-10 history, Cody Pickett of Washington, who passed for 44-58 last season. Jackson taken down at the 14-yard line. It'll be fourth down, and looks like the field goal unit will come on. Real Malone made the tackle for New Mexico. And here's Ilanimi. I wonder when an emergency appendectomy back in September. But still managed to have an excellent season. At one point he made 20 straight field goals. Isn't there some 31 yarder? Some rule they have to. Shouldn't they keep you out for a while after you've had an appendectomy? That one is good. From 31 yards out, and there's a flag down. They're going to put this one on the kickoff. After the play, unsportsmanlike on the defense, penalized 15 yards on the kickoff. Field goal is good. So the field goal counts. It's 41 to 7. Hopefully, we'll have a more competitive game for you tomorrow night. The Sheridan Hawaii Bowl from Honolulu is. Kevin Cobb, who threw for 2,800 yards this year, freshman Conference USA Player of the Year for Houston, leads the Cougars in to take on the Hawaii Warriors. That is tomorrow night at 8 Eastern time. He's impressive. He's an impressive freshman quarterback. I, it's hard to find a year where you've had two freshmen, including Leak, to Chris Leak at Florida, come in and just take over their teams right There's off the bat. There's some very talented young players in America right now, and Houston did an excellent job of turning around their program, and this is a team that has a chance to go on and do some things, and Hawaii, you know, playing at home, this is a football team with Chang and those guys out there. They could put up big numbers. This could be a high-scoring affair. I always like watching that game, too. You have a little weather envy, usually, when you're <laughs> sitting there and watching this. That yeah, was there last year. Well, it was great. If you go on to win this Sonic Challenge deal, don't you get a chance to choose where you go to a bowl game next year? I believe I do. <laughs> and I get to choose who goes with me. Oh, baby. <laughs> so you might want to be a little nicer to me than you guys typically are. Very nice. It's early. It's no early. bullets We're only 10% of the way through this thing. What, 15%? I've back? already prepared my acceptance speech. <laughs> oh, Benny. Getting a workout in tonight. All these push-ups after all these points. The penalty puts the ball on the 50. Well, and Amy should be able to bang it out of the end zone from there. He's 
become the all-time leader in career field goals at Oregon State with his two tonight. He now has 38. So a lot of the Beavers setting records here tonight. Meanwhile, Dontrell Moore just desperately trying to find some running room, averaging 120 yards per game. Coming into tonight, he's at four yards on nine carries. And Craig, at the top of the show, you said he was ready for the NFL now, and I, I didn't agree with you. I said he's a couple a couple years away. He's only a sophomore. I don't think he's quite there yet. I think he's a great player. I think that this game got out of hand for, for him, so he couldn't get many carries. Hey, wise guy, I'm glad you finally brought it up. This game got out of hand. He had no shot. He can't do anything up front if they're, if they're not blocking for him. That's true. Huh? And I also heard you blowing his horn pretty good earlier on, too. Hey, I like him. I think he's a great back. I just don't think he's NFL ready yet. And a flag before the play. Matt, false start on the offense. Five yards, first down. Moore told us when he was a young boy, fifth or sixth grade, he didn't want to play football. He said, I was afraid of playing football. And his mother tricked him into it. She wanted him to play. Drove him down to the field where they were having tryouts for youth football near their home. And the next thing you knew, he was running around catching passes, and he didn't really know why. And then he found out he had been picked for a team. His mother kind of tricked him into it. Cole McCamey is in a quarterback now. The uh, backup freshman. I mentioned their quarterback of the future. This will be the last game for Casey Kelly. McCamey, they think, has great ability. They should be in good shape in the years to come. He dumped it off for Augustiniak, who got drilled by Harvey Witten. Yeah, well, one thing's for certain that New Mexico's tight ends need to need to catch the football and now be prepared for a safety coming from the middle of the field to hit them on. Oh, uh, Turner did it a while ago. They're just running downhill and just lighting those guys up. Wooden was a question mark whether or not he'd be able to play in this game as a safety. He had been recovering from a concussion. He came after the fake. They say he went down. His knee went down apparently back at the 17-yard line. It wouldn't suffer that concussion uh, back in the Civil War, the Oregon game, and I think he missed the USC game. Jamie from Artesia, New Mexico. Their coaches were telling us that it is one of the best high school programs in the state. One of the reasons it's difficult to recruit at New Mexico, there just is not a lot of high school talent that goes on to major division 1A college football. In a good year in high school in that state, they might send three or four players on scholarship to Division 1A schools. They need to go outside the state for most of their talent. McCamey in trouble. Did they whistle him down again? Yes, they did. Chaz Scott with the fifth sack of the night for Oregon State back at the four-yard line. Sean, you know where they go out of state to is to Texas. They've got a lot of Texas kids from all over the state of Texas who go there, and that's a result of their coaching staff having so many ties it, coaching in in Texas and high schools and colleges and growing up there, so that's where their their bread and butter really is. And Doss once again from the back of the end zone as we tick down to a half minute left in the third quarter. This is the tenth punt of the night for Doss. Eric Williams. Right down on the 39-yard line. 40-yard punt for return. A four-yard return. A little pushing and shoving there as we check in with Rob Stone. Hey guys, I know you've been looking forward to this story all day. Here we go. That man, Rocky Long, told us, you know, you should not treat kids differently at a bowl game than when you do at school. Hence, he allowed the five married guys on the team to have their wives room with them this week. Now, coach didn't think it'd be a dis uh, distraction. Married guys usually more focused, get more rest than the non-married ones. Plus, the guys, may they may be in it for the money. The couples receive twice the per diem of other players. So, 76 bucks a day. And, and Sean, you know I'm a bit of a gambling novice. Do they have $76 chips over there at the <laughs> casino? <laughs> you should have seen Rob at the uh, blackjack table. Actually, the roulette table last night. He was very impressive. <laughs> Wait a minute. 
for the pass incomplete. He didn't get the concept that, like he does in a bowl challenge either, that when you win, you have to wait until they, you know, pay you before you take your chips off the table. He kept scooping up his chips, and yeah. about the tenth time, the pit people were finally getting a little. And didn't they, and didn't they keep Rob. telling him, uh, Mr. Stone, you know, this is where you have to bet five dollars, not two dollars. Mm -hmm. Well, I was, try I was trying. I was trying to find the dollar maximum table. Yeah. Yeah. Where, Rob, we can see where we can visit your money as we uh, get a shot at that. <laughs> You're over there trying to corner the silver market at the slot <laughs> machines. <laughs> Uh, well, why, Rob, I would like to know, I think we'd all like to know why you were so fascinated. I mean, what did you, where were the wives supposed to stay at the uh, well, you YWCA? Know, well, or? well, you know, Pony, Pony up there, he's got his wife and kids with him, so he can room with them. That's fine, because he's not playing a bowl game. Right, but, you know, in, in days past, Craig, when you're playing NFL games, did the missus get to stay with you when you're on the road? This is a bowl game. <laughs> and like Rocky Long said, the married guys are getting more sleep than the single guys. Jackson try to get outside, and for one of the few times tonight, they stuff him. Nicely done by Zach Rupp with help from Jarrell Malone. Hard to believe it's the end of the third quarter already. 41-7, Oregon State. Sean McDonough with Rod Gilmore, Craig James, and Rob Stone. Mr. Roulette, as he's known here in Las Vegas. Delighted to have you with us as we head to the fourth quarter. 41 to 7 Oregon State on its way to victory over New Mexico and the Beavers have it first and 10 on their own 48 yard line excuse me second and 23 from the 48 yard line how long does Steven Jackson stay in this ballgame 200 yards he's at 139 right now Anderson under duress and pulled down a sack for Daniel Kegler, the senior from Frostproof, Florida. Let's check in with Rob Stone. Sean, down here with the Jackson Four. Dad, Steve, Mom, Brenda, Sister Yolanda, and Sister Rhonda Pullins. And we mentioned at the beginning of the show, Rhonda kind of the de facto agent, if you will, for, for Steven's future. You made an interesting comment to me when we were talking on the phone. You kind of made an illusion that a, a lot hinged on today's game and that if he had a good game, decisions might be made. Could, could you elaborate on that? No, well, we were what I was saying was we were waiting after this game. We wanted to focus. He wants to make sure that he doesn't let his team down by being distracted. So he's trying to focus on this game, and then afterwards he'll sit down. Do you get a sense what decision he's going to make or you guys are going to make as a family? Well, the decision is his to make. As a family, we're going to support him. Any deadline that you guys have set to try and finalize this? Uh, deadline is Hopefully before school starts back on January 5th. Do you know if he's made a decision or not? Nah, he won't let us. He won't let us know you're playing poker. Hey, tomorrow's Christmas. We'll find out then. Maybe yeah, it might be a nice present. <laughs> Thank you all. Enjoy the holidays. Hey, Rob. While you're still there with Mr. Uh, Jackson, since he's a pit boss, could you ask him what he does when when people who play roulette root? repeatedly reach over and grab their chips while that little thing uh, I'll be happy to. You, you ready? Yeah. All right. Now, at the roulette table, they got this, this crazy rule that when the thing is done and, you know, I win, I go to take my money, but they keep that little uh, ice pick thing on it. Why do they keep that there? Well, that's, that, that's to let you know the winning number. And uh, you can't pick up your money until the... You can't pick, take your winnings until after everybody's been paid. So we make sure that everybody's been paid. Yeah. There you go, Sean. Yeah, that, well, well, we understood that concept, Rob. It was Rob who had a little hard Oh, that was more for me. Yeah. Okay. I just wanted him to explain the principles to you. Thank you. It won't be long before Stephen Jackson is counting his money. Stoner tried hard there to get a scoop from Rhonda, but she wouldn't She wouldn't sing. Yeah. Last, last week I watched Holly Rowe, though, as soon as the game was over with Roethlisberger, ask him that, and he said, I don't know. He went inside at a press conference and said, I'm going out. Mm -hmm. hey, Stephen Jackson is coming out. Okay? I'll make the announcement. I think he's coming out. <laughs> He straddled it, I think. <laughs> yeah, for his fifth touchdown. Anderson said he was in, but he was not. He's already tied for the bowl record with two others with four touchdowns tonight. I only said think because he didn't tell me specifically he was coming out. Instead, he said, well, there's this risk of injury. Well, I have been frustrated by the eight and nine men in the box, and you just never know what might happen tomorrow. Mike Riley will also be a factor. Mike said, no matter what, I know Steve will make a good decision. Obviously, Coach Riley has contacts in the NFL, and he will help Steve engage the opinions of the 
NFL personnel people that they think it's a good idea or not that he come out. They'll try him outside this time, and he can't get there. It'll be fourth down and goal. I think the guys who have no shot at drafting him this year would say stay in school. Yeah, they want to get him this record fifth touchdown, so they're probably going to go for it. So, Pony, how do you feel about that? Well, actually, there's offsides on the last play, so it's still third down. 41-7. Yeah, is, uh, is it okay to go for a fifth score to... Yeah, this is a bowl game, and, and they're out here more than likely knowing Steven's not coming back, and they're trying to get in uh, as many touchdowns as he can. Have a great night for it. If you're Rocky Long, do you get upset with this? No. He knows what's going on. You know, and Rocky Long's a, a competitor, and he's mad more at his team for not being able to stock up, stop them than he is for what they're doing across the field. Couldn't have said it better myself. Thank you. It's third down and goal. There was an offside penalty on the last play. So third down and goal from inside the one. Up and over and in for the fifth time tonight. down after the touchdown that's five that's right Rhonda five touchdowns <laughs> <laughs> he's telling them himself five. 149 yards rushing for the five TDs rushing the other one receiving and they're asking Rocky dead ball Long, personal the foul on the offense penalty be administered on the kickoff it is a touchdown on the kickoff, and the answer was yes. Hill and Nimi on to try the extra point. And I would think, fellas, that'll be the end of the night for Steven Jackson. I would think so. I think that would make a lot of sense at this point. Well, to talk about his future, he came back into the game and blew out his knee in a 48-7 game in the fourth quarter. That would be catastrophic. Great night for Jackson and the Beavers. They are now hammering the Lobos 48-7. I have to go back to my convention. Yeah, I know, but I have a convention. Bueno. Come on. I have to go to my convention. I know. I I wish I could stay. We got married. I I have to go. I love you. I'll call you. But you know one more thing. Yeah. Fifth touchdown, go over for a hug from mom Brenda Jackson. And his dad Steve. And because of the penalty, they'll kick off again from the 20 with 12.06 left. This is the 10th bowl game in Oregon State history. It'll be their sixth win. Last year, they lost to Pittsburgh at the Insight Bowl in Phoenix. Of course, in 2001, they hammered Notre Dame in the Fiesta Bowl. Ratcliffe brings it out to the 38-yard line, a 23-yard return. We mentioned the uh, long bowl drought. And they went to the Oahu Bowl, well, excuse me, the Oahu Bowl. On Christmas Day in 99, they had not been to a bowl game since 1965. When they went to the Rose Bowl and lost to Michigan in a similar drought for New Mexico. They went to a bowl game in 1997. They had not been to a bowl game since 1961. 
They played in games back in the 40s. We never heard of the Harbor Bowl and the Aviation Bowl. Isn't there a Pineapple Bowl or something like that, too? Dontrell Moore, the ball carrier. And his night continues to be miserable. Yeah, that uh, bowl history for the Beavers includes two trips to the uh, Pineapple Bowl. You know where the Pineapple Bowl was? I have no idea. Honolulu. Wow, that's who, 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 who know? Who would have guessed that, huh? Well, I, if you'd have given me time. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Basket rear back, rears back and throws a bomb on the money all the way to the 19-yard line to Dwight Towner. He launched that thing about 50 yards. Well, their best pass plays tonight have been from the wide receivers. Earlier, Brunker completed a pass, and here's Basket. Look how far this thing travels. From his own 20... That's almost 60 yards. That's a wide receiver. You mentioned earlier, a great athlete. Seven-foot high jumper in high school. And another first down. Are you glad I said 60 yards? I noticed you were counting on your team. I just figured out how far they had to go in the last play. <laughs> That's their second first down of the game. <laughs> second first down of the game first in this half. Well, we mentioned the uh, the bowl history for New Mexico. This will be their fifth loss. They were here in Las Vegas last year and lost to UCLA. They were in the Insight Bowl in 1997, lost to Arizona. Their last win was in the Aviation Bowl. You know where that one was? In 1961. Aviation Bowl. Think aviation. Well, aviation. It's like Dayton, Ohio or something. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you. Well, you know, uh -huh. it's right back to your SME days. Right, Summer with the 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 no. No. Was that right? That was John McDonald, our director. Of the Dayton, Ohio, 1961. And the, uh, the Harbor Bowl was in San Diego in 1947. Just doing my homework, Sean. You know, while you were down there watching Rob Stone on the slot machine, I was up studying. Yeah, Blue Man Group. That's what you were cool, studying. Cool, that good. <laughs> oh, that family. Good. Well, That's a theater. good show, isn't it? If you're oh. coming to Las Vegas, would you highly recommend that? Big time. Blue Man Group. McCamey. Mm. Crunched at the 17-yard line. As we are under 10 minutes remaining, Kevin Davidson, backup middle linebacker, made the hit on McCamey. Davidson, the backup to... Richard Siegler, who is also out of the ball game, and his brilliant career has come to an end. There's Kevin, a junior from Tuscumbia, Alabama. You know, during uh, bowl season, I always kind of tally up how the conferences do. And kind of look back and see which conferences have won more bowl games than the other. I kind of, it gives you some kind of a sense of which conferences are stronger than others. Yeah, I, you, you have to, and especially this year where you tally? had this. I got a running tally? Yeah. We, said no, you tally we just up. got started, though. We're only four games into this. Well, to the bowl. Yeah. Challenge. Yeah. Well, let's, say, you know what, let's, come let's talk about it. We'll, we'll rank them then. We'll rank the uh, non-BCS schools then. You can do whatever you want All when right. we come back. Time's been doing. ESPN's exclusive presentation of the 2003 Las Vegas Bowl. Brought to you by Las Vegas. Only Vegas, home of the seven-day weekend. And by Jeep. If it's not trail rated, it's not a Jeep 4x4. Well, it's just about time for Santa to get out of here, isn't it? Go about his appointed rounds tonight. He's got a lot of work to do. He does. Obviously a very dedicated football fan. New Mexico at the 17-yard line. McCamey zips one to the end zone. Touchdown. 
Dwight Counter, a 17-yard reception. And a nice throw by McCamey, showing a very strong arm as he threw a rope into the back of the end zone. You also get a look at his athletic ability as he has to escape to get free to make that throw. Threw it so hard, it almost went through Counter's arms, didn't it? Very nice job stepping up in the pocket. A little poise and confidence for him. Sixth receiving touchdown of the year for Counter. Wes Sunker, first team all Mountain West place kicker this year, adds the extra point. And it's 48 to 14. The comeback is underway with 9.22 to go. 63 yard drive, five plays. We'll come back with more of the week that was from Las Vegas for Rocky Long and Company at the loop. Welcome back to Las Vegas and the Las Vegas Bowl, more than simply a football game. Bowl committee kept these student athletes very busy the last few days. A visit to the Sunrise Children's Hospital. Blue Man Group took in that show. Coach Mike Riley getting a, getting a Blue Man kiss and a little pep rally downtown as well to get everybody fired up. The band's here as well. And they like to keep these guys busy. They, they probably could have involved you guys with a couple more activities. Our, our buddy up there, Pony, speaking at the uh, luncheon yesterday and taking some pot shots at yours truly. I appreciate it, Craig. Well, you know what, Rob? I, you you got me pretty darn good, though. You have to admit, <laughs> when they introduced me in my name, uh, along with the rest of the people up there, nobody was clapping except for Stone. He gave me the old one or two claps, you know, like a bum. When you were introduced as the MC, nobody clapped? Well, it, they weren't clapping for anybody until they announced everyone on the on the dais. And then once they did that, they were going to all be. clap. Well, Stone goes ahead and be, is the funny guy. But once I did again, get the last laugh. It's a, it seems to be a recurring problem. Rob, following direction. You know, don't clap until everybody's been introduced. Maybe don't get claps anyway. Don't take your money off the roulette table until they put that thing out there and then take it off. Uh, I spit thing, as he called it. Well, let's take a look at the game track. Apparently unsponsored. No, it's not unsponsored. It's sponsored by Corbell California Champagne. And it's been all Steven Jackson. Four rushing touchdown, one receiving. And Derek Anderson showed up tonight, too, with a couple of touchdown passes of himself. Yeah, you know, we started talking about Steven Jackson over the last two quarters. But really, Derek Anderson, the way he started this game throwing the football, just put a dagger in that New Mexico defense. Yeah, it's interesting, too, because Rocky Long told us yesterday that he feared Derek Anderson's ability to throw the ball and that if Oregon State could throw it, they were going to have a lot of trouble. Boy, was he right. Adam Rothenflew, the backup quarterback, is in. He completes one to half. Steven Jackson is still on the field in a 48-14 game with 9.06 remaining. There's Rothenflew, and there's Jackson. What, what, what's he doing out there? I don't know. I mean, you have five touchdowns. He's going off. You wonder if they put him in for one play to get a hand when he goes off. Yeah, but he already had the hug from mom and dad. Once you get the hug from mom and dad, you should be done. Second and six. White right. Taken down by Josh Bazinet, and there's a flag down. And a face mask against New Mexico. It's been a penalty filled game. And Rocky Long. Rocky Long certainly uh, not happy with the way his team has played tonight, not competed. He is a very competitive guy. He he gets into the weight room with his with his team and does all over kind of 300 stuff. pounds. Yeah, still 325, 350, somewhere so around there. As a rock, the quarterback, uh, Casey Kelly, was telling us he used to lift with the quarterbacks. We asked him to stop doing it because he was embarrassing us. Pass dropped by Pass. A few things that he has not done well tonight. Like so many of his teammates, he's had a very good night for Coach Mike Riley. 
Riley's quarterback, Rotham a Jr. from Fresno, California. Didn't see much action this year. Mop up duty in five games this season. Out of Washington Union High School in Fresno, California. Dwight Wright. And it's the first down for the Beavers. You know, Sean, you talk about the, the whole year, and, and Rod, you were talking about how you kind of keep track with all the non-BCS schools. Well, you and I got, a, got together here talking about the rankings of the non-BCS schools. And, and when you look at the conferences, the MAC this year, really, Miami of Ohio is one heck of a team. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that with them, with Bowling Green, uh, Northern Illinois, the, I have to say that you put them up top uh, because of their strength, overall strength. Pass down the sideline with another first down as he goes into Lobo territory at the 44. Yeah, what a shame. You know, there's still something wrong with the system when a team that has a season like Northern Illinois had can't go to a bowl game. Yeah, and that, that's really something that's, that's unfair when you think about it, but it's really because of all the bowl affiliations and the like, and if you don't have enough affiliations in your conference, you don't get enough teams there. But Northern Illinois had a great season, and they should be playing in December. And then TCU and, and Conference USA them to do what they did of course Boise State Boise State I think is the number two team if I had to say teams I'd go first of all Miami of Ohio mm -hmm. then I'd say Boise State is number two uh, maybe a Southern Miss or Bowling Green be three or four somewhere in there maybe Utah I, I, I'm not sure team. I'm not sure I would agree with you about uh, Boise State number two I, I've really liked that squad and what they've done the last two years I think Dan Hawkins has done a tremendous job with that that program there and I'm not sure how much longer he'll be there at Boise State I think he's gonna have a hot coaching you there. think they're lower or higher you think Miami you I think, think they're Boise higher State than? might be right there with Miami or higher than them I like ben, ben Roethlisberger's the difference maker. I mean, that guy's a great football player, and, and you see, and but that's the thing about Boise State. I mean, they really don't have that prototype first-round pick that makes the difference in their program. Mm -hmm. They have a bunch of overachieving guys who just compete and play well week in and week out. Right along here, right, right again. He's been the backup to Stephen Jackson for the last two years. Four under seven minutes remaining. Six fifty and the clock running. Oregon State on its way to victory in convincing fashion here in Las Vegas. For the Mac, it's been a great year for the Mac, and Paul Christ, who's the offensive point here at Oregon State, who clearly did a great job tonight getting his team ready to play. His brother Rick is the commissioner of the Mid-American Conference, and I think one of the things that has frustrated Rick over the years is the inability to get more of the Mac teams into bowls, and I think that's going to change with all these team switching the school switching conferences some of the leagues getting stronger some of them getting weaker i think you're going to see the bowl when their contracts expire with italians reshuffling and leagues like the mac probably will get more and should and you know why the mac is so good is because there's a regional understanding there and and i think that's really what has hurt the whack for a while conference usa has tried to make it a regional conference where they have some some meaning behind it uh the mountain west has a lot of affiliations that make sense and I think that's the, that's the key to this whole thing, so that you get some fan support and interest level out there for the conferences. But getting back to Sean's point, I think these new conference affiliations will have an impact where you may have more conferences that can't qualify, they can't get enough teams to get sufficient wins so that some of the other conferences will get extra opportunities to get a team into it. But let's don't get away from the fact that we're seeing it on the field right here tonight. The Pac-10 has an Oregon State team that's seven and five had an average year for a Pac-10 team. And they're out here smoking a team that had a really good team in, in the Mountain West. Second place. So you've got to reward the teams who are out there having to week in and week out, get up to play a worthy opponent. I, I hear you, but you know, people in the Mountain West will say Utah did beat California and they did beat Oregon. Two teams that are in the middle of the Pac-10 conference and, and they handled them. So you're gonna get that argument for what you're saying tonight. Utah's gonna go to a bowl game. Right. So it's a good job. They're going to a bowl game. Utah and Colorado State, the other two bowl teams out of Mountain West, in addition to Rocky Long's Lobos. And that's a very good Utah team. And, of course, their only loss in conference this year was to New Mexico. They put 47 Offside. points on the board against on the U. On the defense, five yards. 
Again, we interrupt Joe Ryder, the ref, and we apologize oh. profusely. Here Quickly. are the uh, Mountain West Conference Bowl affiliations. The AXA Liberty Bowl, the destination of the champion of Mountain West. That's Utah taking on the Conference USA champs from Southern Miss. 3.30 on New Year's Eve afternoon on ESPN. And then Colorado State against Boston College in the Diamond Walnut San Francisco Bowl. That'll be a very good game. That's one of those uh, very even, at least on paper, bowl matchup. Colorado State with a chance to maybe make up for a little bit of a disappointing season by posting a victory over a Big East team that will soon be an ACC team. First and 10, Oregon State. Once again, here is Rob Stone. Sean, an interesting last 10 minutes or so here on the sideline. You can read into it what you will. Steven Jackson spending a lot of time taking pictures with team members, staff, a lot of the red shirt freshman guys uh, who aren't playing but are dressed in the uniform, coming over and having their uniforms autographed by him. Kind of a just an odd feel almost. And I, I don't want to say it because he hasn't confirmed, but almost kind of a, a goodbye feel down here. It certainly is all the earmarks of that. The Lobos blitz and Roth and Palou had to throw it away. He's like the mayor of Las Vegas here tonight. He has been hugging and shaking hands with just about everybody here. Well, he's very popular with his teammates, and we talked about that with him yesterday at the he, he said it was hard for him to, to step up and, and criticize his teammates at times when it needed to be done, but he did do that at one point during the season. Second and ten. They're throwing it again. Josh Hawkins to the end zone. Touchdown. <laughs> 19 yards. So Ruffin Blue has a touchdown pass. All right, Pony, what are you weighing on that one? It's a bowl game. These are kids in the game right now that don't get to play all the time. And you go out there, you play the game. Uh, you run the ball, though. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I, as far as I'm concerned, you know, if they weren't good enough to play and to throw the ball when the game was on the line, there's no need to do it when you're up by 40 points. Now, don't hang me out to dry, like I'm the guy that's making these calls from the booth up here throwing the football. I just asked you if you agreed with him. Make them stop, Craig. Make Stop the insanity. The extra point up and good. 19-yard touchdown pass, 12-play, 72-yard drive. 55-14, Beavers with 440 to go. Five touchdowns tonight for Steven Jackson, tying the all-time bowl record in any bowl game, setting the new Vegas bowl record. And it's 55-14 with 440 to go. And Mr. Sonic, uh, you had New Mexico in this game? You know, every now and then you have to go for a surprise. The favorites aren't going to win every game. You know, part of winning these things is having the courage to uh, go out on the limb every now and then. <laughs> Admittedly, I might have walked out of the wrong limb in this one. <laughs> Kevin Walton runs the kickoff back. 17-yard return. Final four and a half minutes of this Las Vegas Bowl. Oregon State about to make it two wins in a row for the Pac-10 over New Mexico, which lost here to UCLA last year. Sports Center comes your way next. Among the items, who are you calling, Scrooge? Limping home and naughty or nice. What are these, the celebrity Jeopardy categories? I don't know what any of those things mean in a sports story time. They all have to be in the form of a question to Jeopardy, so They're only the first one would be the Jeopardy question. They are Christmas Eve in the spirit of the evening. McCamey going deep, looking for counter. And he was covered by Brandon Catanese. They've already, woo, boy, well. did they give him a Gator as well, too. Mike Riley with a hug from James Newson. Oh, they got the defensive Mark board Banker. here, too. Mark Banker. As they should have. He had a great game plan, and his guys played well. From Plymouth, Massachusetts, 
You ever been there? The Plymouth Rock? Yes, sir. Yeah. Played at Plymouth Carver High School back in the day. The only played against in high school he was telling us the other day, Rod Langway, the Hall of Fame defender. He was a great high school football player. It was hockey. Oh, oh. oh. Thank you, because, you know. Yeah, I know. We couldn't skate across our pastures in Texas. <laughs> Hey, uh, too many cow patties <laughs> sticking up. <laughs> now, this throwing the ball by New Mexico violates my white flag rule. They're going after you. You, you were... You were uh, explain my white flag rule after the play, Sean. Here comes Bray on a blitz. McCamey escapes. Chaz Scott pulls him down at the 38-yard line. First down. All right, the white flag rule. If you are being blown out and you essentially wave the white flag, you don't blitz the other team, you stop throwing deep balls, then the team that's way ahead will reciprocate and will just run the ball to finish off the game and nobody gets embarrassed. However, if you are the losing team and you do not wave the white flag and you try and score and you blitz the quarterback and try to block kicks, then the team that is ahead, they have the right to make you pay for that. Okay. You want this to be an actual rule, or is that just sort of it's an, un an unwritten rule. Mm -hmm. McCamey. Carries out to the 41-yard line. Well, that would be an interesting innovation. Yeah, yeah. I think it could be an actual rule. I worked with Jerry Remy on the Red Sox telecast. Yeah, yeah. He's proposed a, a similar rule in baseball, where if you're way ahead, you can just decline your ups. You know, say it's in the seventh inning, you're ahead 15-1. to one. We don't want to bat. Just get nine outs in a row, and we'll get this over with. That would be a good, you know, talking about speeding up baseball yeah, games. something to that. Y'all send me a note when either one of those pass. <laughs> yeah. Here's the practical thing that happened this, in this particular game. It all went back to those outback stakes being served, and they had run short on the, on the numbers of stakes mm -hmm. for a while. At the pep rally. At the pep rally. Both teams there. And, and I think it was New Mexico who said something like, let's just take their stakes, and, yeah. you know. And, and I don't think Oregon State liked that. They took their stakes back tonight. Yeah, I think they did. I think the, the one unanswered question about this game is a flag down on that long pass intended for counter is, uh, and I'm sure our executives of the network, the flagship, are pondering this question right now. Is this an ESPN instant classic? This game. Wow. I, I don't know, Sean. What do you think? Huh? I don't know. It's close. That means we get to watch the replay of this like like yeah, tomorrow or the I next day. I think this has instant classic capability right here. <laughs> Wait a minute. We're interrupting our man Joe for a promo. The offside is the call. Don't Sorry, Joe. It. But uh, we're excited to tell you about compelling NBA action tomorrow, 2.30 on ESPN. LeBron James, you know, about time he got some exposure. He'll be in Orlando to take on the Magic. And then on ABC, a Christmas doubleheader, it's the Mavericks and the Spurs. And then Houston and Los Angeles. Yao Ming against Shaq. That's a great NBA uh, doubleheader. ABC tomorrow. Not that our game here on uh, ESPN is shabby either. Anytime you can watch LeBron and Tracy McGrady. I'll be tuned in. Right around uh, opening presents and, and the like. That works. You know, our guy Joe making all the calls. Yeah, Joe Ryder, the referee. Caddyshack, Bill Murray. I bet that's what Fowler was thinking. No, it I can't listen be. to him. Sounds like a little bit of Bill Murray. He, but but Ryder is so demonstrative. He is. I mean, he's pumping the hands and he's he's gravelly. Mm -hmm. That's a wide Adrian Bird is the uh, ball carrier, the fullback. He doesn't get many carries. Usually he's blocking for Dontrell Moore. So a chance for him to pluck the big skin. Sophomore from Missouri City, Texas. You didn't like the white flag rule, huh? I right? do. I, it's a, it, it is. It's a common sense thing. Yeah. But for them out there. I think most yeah. of the time that kind of etiquette is followed. It just isn't followed all the time. There really, there were some uh, feelings leading up to this game. A lot of emotions from both teams against each other. Do you think maybe that's why they're borderline at least running it up? I think if you're going to talk to Smack, you've got to be ready to get smacked. Bird again, wrapped up by Kevin Davidson. That could be another rule that 
is an unwritten rule. Okay. And we should not insinuate that New Mexico was the only team talking to smack. I'm sure Oregon State was giving it right back. No, it was mutual smackation. There's yeah. no question about it from our sources so who were at the pep rally. Yeah. Justification with the smackation. Mm -hmm. I know you didn't see it as you were uh, off at Wayne Newton or one of your, one of your many activities, the Hoover Dam with the, the Griswolds. We were the Griswolds. <laughs> only thing missing on my car coming out here, <laughs> Grandma. Yeah, on the hood. And Edna. <laughs> 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 but I remember one of your dates looked qualified enough to be on the hood. Long pass intended for basket incomplete. What a homecoming to Las Vegas for Steven Jackson. Nobody has ever scored more touchdown in a ball game in the history of college football than the five he has scored tonight. Tying with among others, Barry Sanders. Four rushing TDs. One receiving TD ran for 149 yards on 28 carries at 51 yards receiving on five receptions including the first touchdown of the night on a 34 yard touchdown pass incomplete pass intended for counter and big surprise there he is the capital one player of the game Canley, the other who has scored five touchdowns. That was for San Jose State in the 1990 California Bowl. Third down and ten, a minute and a half to go. Sports Center comes your way next. McCamey dumps it off short for very little. Terrence Thomas senior from Albuquerque, tackled by Davidson. Davidson has picked up right where Sigler left off when he took over for Richard, the middle linebacker. It almost seems like Oregon State defensively playing with like 13 or 14 guys out there. Fellas, I've enjoyed it. It's been a good week. Well, this is a fun place to come for a bowl game. Absolutely. You know, the teams Team enjoy it. We, uh, Congratulate all the people affiliated with the Las Vegas Bowl. They certainly put on a first-class show. McCamey flushed from the pocket. This is fourth down. He's running out of real estate and just lobs it up incomplete. And then got knocked down along the far sideline. And Oregon State will take over on downs. There's so much to do out here for the players. And, and the word spreads amongst the teams how fun it is to play in the Las Vegas Bowl. Tina Kuntz of Murphy, the director of this bowl, did a heck of a job of making sure these players enjoyed each and every event they went, they went to. There's an article in the local paper here. Of course, they're biased writing in the local paper, you would think, that this should be the reward for first place for Mountain West. But there's a bigger payout in uh, not to say anything bad about Memphis. We love Memphis. That's a nice trip, too. But here they had a little local pride. They said, why isn't this the number one bowl from Mountain West? Well, they know how to entertain out here, that's for sure. There's so much to do. The hotels, uh, everything's accommodating for them. I don't think there are enough hotels here. Man, ours is big. <laughs> we, we did some walking. There are a few. <laughs> there are quite a few. Yeah, my room was definitely about an $8 cab ride from the lobby. <laughs> <laughs> you don't you need can't. to work out when you're here. You just walk from your room to the lobby. Yeah, and that's it for the exercise for the day. The uh, penalty for roughing keeps the drive alive. Catching the fountain show at the Bellagio the other day. That was also a lot of fun. That Cressup made the last reception for New Mexico. You know one thing I would like to see New Mexico do in the future? Change the numbers. Mm. They are impossible to see mm. in the broadcast booth. Rocky Long would have that uh, pretty low on his list of priorities. Yeah, I don't think that's high on the list. Wait, we have strong cameras at the Empire State Building. Looked like it a little bit, didn't it? Yeah, it does. Well, it's supposed to be. It's New York, New York trailer time. That is intercepted in the end zone. Savvy Piscatelli takes a knee. 
And a lot of guys getting their name in the record books here at the Las Vegas Bowl. As Piscatelli has his first pick of his career, freshman from Boca Raton, Florida. Good special teams player this year for Coach Riley. He's fired up. As he should be. Absolutely. Chance to get in the bowl game and make a pick. Okay, so that goes along with the theory of what I said on the last touchdown that Oregon State had. Right? If they're in the game and they're playing, they're in the game playing. Oh, he's supposed to drop the interception? No. <laughs> well, was that guy supposed to tackle himself on the out ball? I mean, they throw the ball to the end zone, kick the pick it off. <laughs> I mean, tie your shoes together. <laughs> I guess they say he came out of the end zone to the one. Well, still chance for a 99-yard bomb here. With 20 seconds to go. Have to take a knee from there. Yeah, you really can't. Don't have to go forward. The handoff to Dwight Wright. And that will end it. Mike Riley wins his first bowl game as a head coach. And he did it in very convincing fashion as the Oregon State Beavers dominate from start to finish and win the Las Vegas Bowl. Hammering New Mexico. The final score, Oregon State 55, New Mexico 14. Sports Center is next here on ESPN. Now for Rod Gilmore, Craig James, Rob Stone, and our entire ESPN crew, I'm Sean McDonough. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Merry Christmas to all, and to all, a good night from Las Vegas. <laughs>